Coming to you live from Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg, it's time for ODAC baseball between the Hornets of Lynchburg hosting the Eastern Mennonite Royals. Lynchburg enters the game 18-3, 7-1 in the ODAC, and they're undefeated at home. Lynchburg is riding a five-game winning streak as well. The Royals will look to spoil all that. They enter the contest at 5-18. It's almost time for the national anthem, and then it will be first pitch coming up in less than five minutes. You'll be able to see it all live on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. A wonderful version of the national anthem has concluded, and now we're ready for baseball between Eastern Mennonite and Lynchburg. The Royals come to town for Eastern Mennonite, 5-18. and 18. It's been a struggle this season for Eastern Mennonite. They are 1-8 and eight in the ODAC Conference. They did get a win against Virginia Wesleyan. Uh, there's some things to like about this EMU ball club, and I know it's a team that Coach Lucas Jones and his coaching staff at Lynchburg are not going to 
let the guys take EMU lightly. Every conference game you're, you're totally switched on and you're ready for. It is Sunday. We originally had this game on the schedule for yesterday, but rain and then high winds in central Virginia. Just a much better day to play today. We do still have some wind out there, but far less than yesterday. It was fierce out there yesterday as far as the wind conditions fans. But we'll keep an eye on that. It does look like it's blowing in from right field at the moment. Lynchburg in the home Reds here this Sunday. They're going to get Zach Potts on the mound, undefeated on the season. And Potts has been outstanding. A 2.79 earned run average. He has struck out 35, only walked 10 so far on the year, putting together a fantastic campaign. And he was up here after a game, I guess it was earlier this week, and we asked him about the Washington and Lee start. It was another one where he had a just kind of a rough inning, and he said, right now I'm pitching too good to give up multiple runs in an inning. So that's the, the sense you get from Zach Potts, that he wants to perform at an elite level. He knows he's pitching pretty close to that elite level, just wants to get rid of one or two bad innings in there. think he's okay with giving up a single run here or there, but it was just a great line from Zach Potts who said, yeah, I'm, I'm just throwing the ball too good right now to be giving up multiple runs in an inning. So he's got the high standard going. The battery mate will be Holden Fiedler. You got to see the throw down to second there on the warm-up for him. Around the infield for Lynchburg, it will be Josh Jorman at first. Freshman combo in the middle, Batman and Robin. That's Ben Jones at second. Brandon Garcia back at shortstop. He is okay after a leg injury that has kept him out for about half the season. At third base, you'll have Gavin Collins. And then around the outfield and left, Avery Neves, the All-American. Center field, Carson Atkins, who's swinging probably the hottest bat on the team right now. We'll touch on that. And then in right field, you have Jackson Harding. Jackson Harding, whose brother will be in the starting lineup for Eastern Mennonite. So we've got all kinds of conversation pieces already in this one, and then I'm sure as the game unfolds, we'll have even more. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll say hello, hello to all the Royals fans out there. EMU has a lot of Virginia players on the roster as this ball is pumped into left center, sinking. Brandon Garcia made a dive after it. Great effort there by Garcia. And you see him kind of put the fist in the glove afterwards, which is sort of the universal body language of, man, I was close to that one, or, man, I should have had that one. But it does drop in for a single for Logan Mason. Logan Mason, leadoff man, is on board. He's got good numbers on the season. And now Ethan Spraker up to bat for Eastern Mennonite in the road gray pants with the black jersey, and they have the blue trim. Potts will have to go from the stretch here early. Usually not a problem for him, and throughout the season, we've really made the case that Potts, Potts, excuse me, pitches better from the stretch position. Seems to just heighten the focus that much more when runners get on base. And that's been something he has really excelled at this season, pitching with runners on base. Not that he's bad when the bases are empty by any means, but just seems to tighten up and get even nastier, and there you see it. Nasty one on the outside corner, maybe even off the plate. That's out number one and strikeout number one. Ethan Spraker is gone, and here comes Nick Arnold. Speaking of numbers, he leads Eastern Mennonite offensively in pretty much every category. It's 425 on the season. He's driven in 24, 34 hits total, and he leads the Royals in the on-base percentage as well at 531. So Nick Arnold... Outstanding stuff for Eastern Mennonite in otherwise a forgettable season up to this point. But he has really gotten it done. There's one inside for Zach Potts. Target was outside. It may have been a miss there, but Potts gets away with it for strike number one. Runner at first is Logan Mason. Got on via the single over Brandon Garcia's head. Tough play for a shortstop going back. You teach the outfielders and you work on with your outfielders that first step back, and running down those balls over their head. In fact, that's really one of the favorite things for an outfielder to do is turn and to track one down in front of the warning track, those plays. Out, or infielders, rather, you don't really think about going back to catch a sinking line drive very often, but it is a skill to it. Some guys are better than others. And certainly those middle guys, second and short, seem to get more opportunities to do that than say your first baseman or your third baseman. 
but it's a fun way to take a hit away and one where a, a shortstop or any other infielder can really showcase their skill. Two strikes here on Arnold as he fouls this one away. There's one gone in the top of the first. It's Lynchburg and Eastern Mennonite. Lynchburg undefeated at Fox this season, 10-0. and And they are now in their last two seasons at home, 31-2. and And the record is impressive the further back you go. It's 53-5 and in the, in the last three seasons for Lynchburg at home. It has been a fortress here at Fox Field in Lynchburg. And we've got a good little crowd outside that has developed on this Sunday afternoon. It's about 50 degrees with a little bit of wind, less than yesterday. And we've got partly cloudy conditions. I'm looking over at our public address man and fearless leader, Tim LaDuca, to get his uh, up or down, thumb, thumbs up or thumbs down on the partly cloudy conditions as this ball gets ripped through the middle for the second hit of the inning. Two singles for Eastern Mennonite has runners at first and second. Nick Arnold will continue the good season. Natty Solomon is the designated hitter for Eastern Mennonite. And he also has put together a good season, hitting 325. He's driven in 22, four homers on the year for Natty Solomon. Zach Potts has got two runners on now in the top of the first, one gone. Lynchburg's defense has been pretty good at turning those double plays this season. Something a pitcher always loves. It's a line that you always hear from the pitchers and the pitching coach is, hey, you're just a ground ball away from getting out of the inning. And you do hear that with one out with the double play in order. Big lead at first for Nick Arnold. Josh Jorman is playing behind him at first base for Lynchburg. 2-0 count now on the power man, Natty Solomon. Potts undefeated on the year, looks in. Ready for the 2-0 pitch. Away target from Fiedler, and it comes in for a strike. Zach Potts was 8-4 last year in 13 starts. Struck out 63 and only walked 20. That was in 73-plus innings of work. And the numbers this season as far as the control, very good again for Zach Potts. 36 strikeouts to only 10 walks. That one missed the zone up. And now it's a 3-1 count for Natty Solomon. The catcher, Matthew Harding, would be due up next. Harding's brother is stationed in right field right now for Lynchburg, Jackson Harding, both products of Randolph Henry High School. Big pitch from Potts. He gets the ground ball. Collins on a high hop to second for one. Juggled a bit there, but they get it across in time. It's Collins to Jones to Jorman, and there is that double play. Pitcher's best friend ends the top of the first. Eastern Mennonite leaves one on. They got two hits, no runs, no Lynchburg errors, and we'll go to the bottom half of the first inning here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
Here comes the bottom of the first inning at the University of Lynchburg. Cam Lane will lead it off for the Hornets. He's facing Hunter West, right-hander number 38 for Eastern Mennonite. And the battery mate will be Matthew Harding, one half of the brother combination that is starting, one Harding brother for each team today. So that's fun. Cam Lane leads off. Brandon Garcia will hit second for Lynchburg. The All-American Avery Neves bats third. Ben Jones, who was part of that double play there in the cleanup spot. Jackson Harding, the left fielder, will hit fifth. Mm. Cam Lane nearly sliced that one fair down the line, but instead it is a foul ball. Back to the lineup for Lynchburg. Gavin Collins will play third base and hit sixth. Josh Jorman, the first baseman, bats seventh. Holden Fiedler, the catcher, hitting eighth. And Carson Atkins, the nine-hole man again. He's been locked into that lineup spot every game this season as Lane will roll this one to the second baseman, probably out number one it is. Just back to the lineup here for Lynchburg. They've used different combinations all year. Uh, this may be the second time, actually, that we've seen this combination. I'm going to double check that for you, fans. But there have been several constants. Avery Neves has bat third in every game this year. And as I say that, I'm, w I'm wondering if maybe he hit fourth in a game. But we'll, we'll double check that as well. Carson Atkins has hit ninth in every game this year. And Gavin Collins has been in the lineup batting every game this season. I think he had a game or two where he hit seventh, but typically Gavin Collins has been locked into that six-hole slot there. Everything else has kind of been a constant state of motion. Brandon Garcia, when he's healthy, has played, and he's healthy again in the batter's box right now. The freshman shortstop for Lynchburg. Brandon Garcia actually has a four-game hitting streak himself. Got a hit against Christopher Newport in a win on Wednesday. And then you go back to his previous games in early March. I think the final one before the injury happened was March 11th. And it was actually a re-aggravation of a previous injury. Garcia's working with a 1-2 count now on Hunter West, the right-hander for Eastern Mennonite. But Brandon Garcia, a difference maker when he's in the lineup. As he watches that one go low and away. Brandon Garcia enters the game hitting 368. He's on base at 500. He's driven in seven, 10 walks to only three strikeouts. And that's for a freshman. He'll shoot this one into center field and then it will be caught by Logan Mason who came on to make the grab for out number two. Uh, the and speaking of hot, this guy has been pretty hot his entire career. A few cold stretches, but they're few and far between for Avery Neves. He's currently on a six-game hitting streak, three multi-hit games in there. He's hit safely in 17 of 21 this season. And Avery Neves is now one run away from tying the all-time runs scored record at the University of Lynchburg. That one is currently held by Joey Arthur. He's got... I believe it is uh, 161 runs scored in his career, Joey Arthur, and Avery Neves has won 60. So pretty soon he'll tie Arthur and break that, and then that'll be another career record that Neves holds here at Lynchburg. Already the career home run leader, already the career walks leader. Neves will pound this one in the right center gap. This is in doubt here as Mason tried to get there, now slips at the warning track. Turn and burn for Avery Neves around second. He's going to be standing up into third. That is a two-out triple for Avery Neves. Absolutely blistered in that right center gap. That is opposite field power there for Avery Neves. He's got it to all fields, and he showcased it right there. And Avery Neves now with 12 career triples for those keeping track of another career stat from Avery Neves. 12 career triples for the All-American. Ben Jones now. Benny Bombs has also been swinging a hot bat in his freshman season. Ben Jones is hitting 394 with four homers and four doubles. And he has not even played the full year. That's in eight starts. This will be start number nine for the left-handed hitter from the Raleigh area. Oh, almost got hit. This is going to 
kick far enough away for Neves to come in. Run number one in the books for Lynchburg. They lead 1-0. It's the triple and then the pass ball wild pitch there to allow Avery Neves to score. So Mr. Neves is tied now for the all-time lead at Lynchburg. 161 times Avery Neves has touched home plate. Jones will shoot that one actually out of play. It nearly went in the EMU dugout and hit the sidewall there and then came back and hit the netting. And that's about as accurate as a foul ball play-by-play -play call as you're ever going to get, fans. And probably we'll have to not do that again because we don't want it to be redundant as Ben Jones watches, I think, a breaking ball down in the dirt. 2-2 two -two the count with two gone here in the bottom of the first. Lynchburg leading. One nothing. We'll spend some time today talking about Ben Jones' freshman season as he watches another one in the dirt because it's really worthy of high praise and, and, and conversation, and you just get the feeling that he's going to continue to play great baseball, so we're going to continue to talk about it. But this Lynchburg team with so many veterans, so many guys that have – career resumes that are huge but then you got some freshmen as well some young studs uh oh that one got underneath the glove of the second baseman Cole Bashinsky and that's going to be E4 to allow the inning to continue Bashinsky was coming on trying to catch that ball on the move Jones running hard out of the box I don't think Bashinsky had to really rush to get to it but he was, he was in at least second or third gear there, and the ball just slipped right under the glove. It'll bring up Jackson Harding. That's one that, as a coach, Jones bluffs the steal. As a coach, that's one that's going to aggravate you a little bit because it's early in the game, and the infield should be playing pretty true. You get to the seventh, eighth inning when the, when the dirt's been all chewed up and you get these unpredictable hops, then you might be – a little bit more apt to just let that one go, but a first inning error there on what seemed to be just a routine ground ball. Probably not gonna make Adam Posey, the head coach for Eastern Mennonite, very happy. Coach Posey in his fourth season, 32 career wins at Eastern Mennonite. He was a good player for them. At his alma mater now, just like Lucas Jones, the head coach for Lynchburg. Hunter West will throw over and check on Ben Jones. Mr. Jones is a threat to run. And with two outs, might be in play as Harding has to dance out of the way from that inside fastball. Ben Jones, two for two stolen base wise this season. Lynchburg as a team has stolen 28 of them. That's an area where Eastern Mennonite's been pretty good this year. They are 30 for 35 in stolen base attempts this season. So the Royals like the running game a little bit. We'll see if it's on display today. That's ball four. Competitive pitch. I think Harding didn't want to, maybe didn't want to show the umpire up. He didn't sprint out of the box to first like a lot of guys do when they think they've drawn the walk. Sort of took a longer look back there at the home plate ump, who finally ushered him down to first base. Ball four. So it started with a two-out triple from Avery Neves. Leadoff man Cam Lane went down 4-3. It was a fly ball to center for Brandon Garcia, second out of the inning. But the inning continues here as the Royals having a little bit of trouble retiring the third out. Number 15, Gavin Collins is up and ready to work. Runners on first and second. Collins will watch that one come in. A little nod of the head. Gavin Collins, the junior right-hander from Centerville High School. 267 on the season. He's got over 120 career hits. So he falls in that veteran category, even though he's just a junior. A three-year starter, Gavin Collins. Hits this one well to right field. Right fielder battling the sun and will not come up with it. That will drop inside. Fair ball, one run is in, two runs are in. Gavin Collins head first slide into third base. So Eastern Mennonite got the first two outs pretty quickly, but the third has been hard to come by. 
It looks like it's going to be another triple for Gavin Collins. Two runs come in. That was Jones who reached on the air and Harding who got on with the walk. Josh Jorman in the box now. Watches this fastball come across the outside part of the plate. Lynchburg leading 3-0 already in the bottom of the first. It's all come with two outs, by the way, fans. Ground ball from Jorman. Second baseman fields this one, throws, and now the inning is over, but it's a big one for Lynchburg. They score three, a couple triples, one Eastern Mennonite error, and they leave one on. We'll go to the top of the second at Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. Three runs come across for Lynchburg in their half of the first inning. It all happened with two outs. Royals retired the first two outs pretty quickly, but Lynchburg exploding. And that's part of the reason why you have a guy like Avery Neves batting third. You make sure he comes up in the first inning. You guarantee him an at-bat. That was the traditional thinking with the lineup construction fans. With the new school, the metrics and the analytics, a lot of people say hit your best hitter first. Hit your best hitter leadoff so he gets some extra at-bats throughout the year. And it would make sense, maybe that leadoff guy, your best hitter might come up in the ninth inning when the game's on the line. Those sorts of, thing are all, those sorts of things are all in play. But there is something to be said for having your best hitter hit third. You got some table setters in front of them. We know Carson Atkins in the nine hole is a table setter himself. Atkins is in center right now for Lynchburg. He is shaded in the right center gap. Other than that, the defensive alignment looks to be pretty straight up here for Lynchburg on Matthew Harding, the catcher for Eastern Mennonite. He'll roll one to the shortstop. Might be a tough one for Garcia. Strong throw. Jorman down to the ground with the glove to get it for out number one. Alec Riles steps up. He's the first baseman for Eastern Mennonite. Lynchburg got the double play in the first inning. All season, we've been talking about Potts pitching well with runners on. That's part of the reason why he's pitching well with runners on, these double play combos and the double plays that Lynchburg has turned with quite a few different infielders as well. Gavin Collins has been somewhere in the infield every game this season, third or short. He's factored into quite a few of those double plays. And he got the last one started there in the top of the first inning for Lynchburg. Alec Riles enters the ball game over 300, 304, driven in six. All singles so far for Alec Riles this season. He hits with one out against Zach Potts. Jorman will body that up. We could have a play now, but Josh Jorman will scamper to it in time and step on the bag with his foot. Potts was in the area to cover if necessary, but Jorman pretty wisely grabbed that one and then pounced on the bag for out number two. So that was a smart one there from Josh Jorman. He could see that the hop was going to catch him kind of unevenly, that short hop ball over there. 
at first and decided to wisely get the chest in front of it. Mm, there's a shot. Ben Jones handles, really made it look pretty easy. Soft toss to first base for out number three, and that inning is gone pretty quickly. Eastern Mennonite scoreless. Lynchburg will hit in the bottom of the second, leading 3-0. It'll be Holden Fiedler leading off the bottom of the second inning for Lynchburg. And the Hornets already lead 3-0. All the runs coming with two outs in that first inning, an explosive first inning. Lynchburg beat Christopher Newport in a ranked matchup, 14-6 on Wednesday. It was basically all Hornets in that one. They actually fell down 1-0, I think it was in the third inning, and then they exploded for an inning that just seemingly wouldn't end. And once that happened, they took control on the captains and got win number 18 of the season. Jones and Atkins both doubled in that win versus Lynchburg. Atkins also had a home run. He drove in four on the day. Carson Atkins is due up next here after Holden Fiedler. Just going back to that game against Christopher Newport. 11 hits total for Lynchburg, 12 walks. It's been a big part of their game plan really for the entire time Coach Lucas Jones has been here. Getting a good pitch to hit is so key. They don't chase a lot of bad pitches. Fiedler showed some evidence of that fact right there laying off that one, which was pretty close. And with two strikes, you have a tendency to want to go after anything. But the Hornets really know the zone. They track the ball well. They read the pitches well. They've got the game plan coming in as well against the opposing pitcher. The scouting, a big part of things in that. And so I think they've got that confidence going in the box to not swing at any bad pitches. And let me, let me amend that. It's not that the Hornets don't swing at any bad pitches. They do. It's baseball. You're always going to go fish at one but they don't swing at as many as their opponents, and they seem to really be fine with taking the walks. Everybody wants to hit. Every hitter that's ever lived would rather get a base hit than take a walk, but some guys understand that that's a big part of the game, and they'll take the free pass if and when it's offered. Fiedler's got the full count now. He'll bounce this one to short. Could be a tough play. Spraker coming on, gets it there in time for out number one. So here's your first look hitting wise at Carson Atkins, number 12. Since March 19th, fans, Carson Atkins has 16 hits and four homers. He's basically got all four homers this season in the last two and a half weeks. That's nine games in that stretch there. So 16 hits in the last nine games, four long balls in there. He's hit some doubles as well. And just in the last four, get this, fans, this is a doubleheader a week ago against Washington and Lee, and then a home game against Hampton, Sydney, and CNU. In those four games, the four games in the last week, Carson Atkins is 10 for 14, absolutely on fire. And when you're on a heater like that, you just can't wait for the next game to roll around. You want to find a way to stay as hot as possible. 10 for 14 in the last week for Carson Atkins. Three doubles, two homers in there. 
driven in seven. He watches this one go in the other batter's box. Hitting with two strikes right here. And one out in the bottom of the second. Atkins got off to a little bit of a slow start. I mean, the numbers weren't terrible, but now they look really good for Carson Atkins. Picked up an ODAC player of the week last season in March. You have to feel like he's going to be in the running for that again. Of course, we don't know what Carson Atkins is going to do today. But if you're a Lynchburg fan, you hope it's a continuation of the trend. Yeah, how about it? Atkins swings on this. Rip and run time around first base. It'll be an easy double for Carson Atkins. So I think the hot streak has continued. An extra base hit. It's a double. He's in scoring position with one gone in the bottom of the second. It wasn't his highest exit velocity in this hot streak that he's had. But the placement was perfect. He got enough of it. And, of course, the speed never in doubt for Carson Atkins. Cam Lane up for at bat number two now. Grounded out to the second baseman in the top of the first. This one wide right off the hand of Hunter West, who is the starting pitcher for Eastern Mennonites, still out there in inning number two. Hunter West comes into the game, one and four record. He started eight, pitched 24 innings. He struck out 18 and only walked nine. No strikeout so far for Hunter West. He has walked one. Jackson Harding took the two-out walk, and then later came around to score in that third inning for Lynchburg to begin the game. Two triples in that three-run first inning. One from Avery Neves that got the party started, and then Gavin Collins, a two-RBI triple. One away here in the second. Lane hits this one off the foot leg. He's got the, the shin protector there. I think it might have actually missed that. The shin guard and the, and the body armor in general is so prevalent at every level of baseball now. You, you're seeing the five-year-olds wear the shin protector these days. The other funny one that I think about fans as far as those pieces of armor go is even at every level, even in the big leagues, the guy will hit the double. They called time to give the, the shin guard to the coach, but he ran to second no problem with the shin guard on. It didn't slow him down getting to second. So you almost wonder, well, couldn't you just leave it on while you're, while you're out there running to, uh, to first or the elbow guards of the other one? It doesn't seem like that elbow protector would slow you down that much on the bases. I would say just leave it on. And especially with this emphasis that Major League Baseball has with speeding the game up, you almost wonder if, if the MLB would step in and say, no, you're just gonna, if you're going to wear it to hit, you got to wear it to run. Here's a hit from Cam Lane. Could have a play at the plate. Probably not with the speedy Carson Atkins. Yeah, he is in. No problem. RBI single for Cam Lane. It's hit number four on the afternoon here for Lynchburg, and the lead is increasing. 4-0 the advantage right now for the home team. So two triples, a double. That's actually the first single of the game so far for Lynchburg. It had been all extra base hits up to that point. And now Brandon Garcia has a chance to keep the merry-go-round going here. One out. Cam Lane leads off first. Has to dodge that inside fastball from Hunter West. Just checking at the, uh, looking down at the Eastern Mennonite bullpen. I see some players down in the bullpen, but I don't know that we see any activity just yet. I don't know that anybody is warming up. So Hunter West may be in there to try to do some problem solving of his own and see if he can limit the damage and get out of the second inning. Hornets have already scored one. And obviously you've got dangerous hitters coming up behind Brandon Garcia. Garcia's dangerous. Here we go. Hit streak continues. Five games in a row that Brandon Garcia has hit and reached base with a base hit. That's a single. And the always dangerous Avery Neves up with runners on first and second. Back-to-back -back singles for Lynchburg. It's now three hits in a row for the Hornets.
First baseman set up behind Brandon Garcia at first. Second baseman, you can almost see him there in your shot, trying to keep an eye on Cam Lane. Swinging a foul ball from Avery Neves on the first pitch. I like how Hunter West is coming after the Lynchburg hitters. I don't, I don't think he's necessarily trying to pitch around people. Some of his issues are just losing the control here and there. But I think the game plan is in place to try to get ahead early and attack Lynchburg. There's a danger in that game plan, though, obviously, with the way the Hornets swing the bat. Lynchburg as a team, 310. The average right now, 310 for Lynchburg as a team at the moment. And that average has been going up and up. It was 276 for Lynchburg as a team through 10 games. I got it up to 302 through 16 games. And now 21 contest in, Lynchburg has a 310 batting average as a team. Neves out in front of that one for strike two. Sunny day here in the Hill City. Some wind, but not nearly as much as yesterday. We had the wind advisory yesterday. It was so much wind, it was breaking equipment up at Schellenberger Field on campus. Neve swing and miss, and he is down on strikes. First strikeout of the game for Hunter West, and I would argue it's a very big one to get Neves out of there with runners on, one in scoring position, but here comes another danger hitter, Ben Jones. Reached with the error last inning. Part of a big first run. Came around to score on the triple from Gavin Collins. Off speed in for strike one. Again, Hunter West coming at these Lynchburg hitters. Hornets continue to be patient despite the four run lead. Sometimes you just go up there hacking at anything when your team is already up. But Lynchburg still disciplined, working those counts. 1-1 one, one now is the count for Ben Jones, the freshman from Jordan High School. It's Durham, and I, I, I say Raleigh sometimes. I guess Raleigh area is technically still correct, but Durham is the hometown for Ben Jones. Another breaking ball, strike two. One, two, the count now. Garcia at first, Cam Lane at second. Carson Atkins has already doubled and scored in this second inning. Inside target for West. See if he gets it there. Kind of floated a breaking ball, and Ben Jones fouled it off. I think that was supposed to be the one that ends up on the back foot of the lefty. West didn't get it there, but he'll get another try. One to the count with two away. Cam Lane, good wheels at second. Threat to score on any base hit. Maybe just any ball put in play, really. Should be running hard on contact with two outs. Jones will make contact and flare that one over the Lynchburg batting cage down the left field line. The power is evident for Ben Jones, even when he makes outs. They tend to be those long, loud outs that the outfielders have to turn their back and run on, track down near the fence line. Ben Jones, very, very impressive and just a freshman. Ready for another 1-2 offering from Hunter West. Another foul ball. Jones hanging around in here with a long at bat, two outs. Got on with the air in his first plate appearance. Lynchburg leads 4-0. It's been five hits already in the contest for Lynchburg. Jones looking to add a sixth here. Breaking ball. Does put good metal on this when the left fielder had to go back a few feet, but the grab is made in left field for out number three. So Lynchburg gets one across, three hits. They leave two on, no royal errors, and we'll go to the top of the third inning here at Fox Field.
So much fun already on a Sunday here at Fox Field. ODAC baseball between Eastern Mennonite and the University of Lynchburg. Lynchburg got pushed to Sunday last weekend in a game at Lexington against Washington and Lee. But that's one thing that, as we'll hold that thought for a moment here, as Garcia slides into one in the hole. That'll go down as a hit for Alex Galuciano, the right fielder. Third hit of the game for Eastern Mennonite. Uh, the baseball coaches of the world, though, fans are really good about looking at that weekend forecast and picking the best day to play. Pretty common to see Lynchburg move a game from Saturday to Sunday. And then also you have the other option sometimes of moving a game up because most everybody's schedule is free on Friday as Aiden Miller shows bunt. Harder to do during the week. Take Lynchburg's schedule last week. It was a conference game against Hampton Sydney on Tuesday and then the ranked matchup against CNU on Wednesday. So if you get some weather there, you don't have as much leeway to start moving things around because then you got two teams involved two opponents involved. Uh, next week, it'll be Tuesday, April 4th at home for, Nor for Lynchburg. As Collins comes on, throws on the run. Nice play there to get Miller at first on the sack bunt. One gone with the leadoff man, Logan Mason, coming up. Lynchburg at home, Tuesday, April 4th. That'll be against North Carolina Wesleyan. And then the Hornets will hit the road to take on Randolph-Macon Wednesday, April 5th. It looks like it's going to warm up some next week. It might really feel like baseball weather Tuesday and Wednesday. I think we could be over 80 here in central Virginia. So we'll look forward to that. We've got Logan Mason already one for one so far in the game. Check swing, fouls that one back. Second at bat against Zach Potts, who has a runner in scoring position again. The Royals have stranded one. They did have runners on first and second in the top of the first, and then it was a double play ball. Collins to Jones to Jormund to end the threat. Bunch shown there by Logan Mason. Strike called. Now it's an 0-2 count. Logan Mason hits 366 so far on the season. Basically one of four full-timers over, over 300, excuse me, for Eastern Mennonite. Great spot there from Potts. Wow. 0-2 pitch. Just a fabulous location right there on the edge of the batter's box line. And give Logan Mason some credit for laying off of that. Let's see what the game plan is off of that. Go back to it. No, went in. The tailing fastball really ate up Logan Mason, but he checked the swing. Pretty impressive sequence there from Zach Potts. You get him looking outside, then you come back and bust the doors in. And Logan Mason was just able to hold on to it there. Logan Mason from nearby Rocky Mount, Virginia, got jammed. Jormund is over. He'll step on the bag himself for out number two. Ethan Spraker, the shortstop, to bat with two gone and a runner at third for Eastern Mennonite. Ethan Spraker is another guy who is from not too far away, Vinton, Virginia, William Byrd High School, a junior. About an hour or so from campus here at Lynchburg, but Ethan Spraker in his third season for the Eastern Mennonite Royals. Swings and misses at that, 0-1 the count on Zach Potts the right-hander from Oilville, Virginia. Goochland High School for Zach Potts. 0-2 count. See how nasty Mr. Potts gets right here. Maybe look for that ball just on the, on the other batter's box line. Looks like that's the target. Got him. What a pitch from Zach Potts. Pitching to the game plan there, executing. Runner left in scoring position again. One hit for Eastern Mennonite. No Lynchburg Royals, or no Lynchburg errors, excuse me, and we'll now head to the bottom of the third. Hornets lead 4-0.
Kyle Haney hanging out with you on a sunny Sunday afternoon. First Sunday in April. We're potentially thinking about some new play-by-play -play voices here on the LHSN, the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network, as Jackson Harding will bounce one to first base, so we'll have to talk about the brother-to-brother -brother combination a bit the next time one of the Harding boys comes up. That is out number one. And here comes Gavin Collins. A triple already. He's already driven in two. It was all part of that three-run first inning for Lynchburg. Gavin Collins, a junior from Clifton, Virginia, Centerville High School. Third triple of the season for Gavin Collins. He's got some serious power numbers, too. Sneaky good power numbers. Three doubles for Gavin Collins, three triples, and one homer. Hit that homer here at Fox Field. Most of Lynchburg's homers seem to be coming on the road, but Gavin Collins is one that has cleared the fence here at Fox. Carson Atkins also in that category. Neves has got a home run here. I think Carson Atkins has got two at home. As we're checking out the fans here at Fox Field, the crowd has grown a little bit. Talked about Eastern Mennonite, so many Virginia players on their roster. It's probably actually a closer trip for a lot of the Royal fans to get to get this game than it is Eastern Mennonite home games as Collins fouls one back. And you know Lynchburg's roster is filled with players from the Commonwealth as well. Coach Lucas Jones and his staff so good with their recruiting, identifying talent, attracting talent, and then they get the most out of them when they get here as well. As Collins watches that one go by. Speaking of getting the most out of talent, maybe we should be talking about the big news with former Lynchburg Hornet Grayson Thurman signing a minor league contract with the Toronto Blue Jays organization. He's a local guy from Alta Vista High School. Wasn't much of a prospect coming into his Lynchburg career, but the coaching staff maximizing the talent, sensing that something was there. And Mr. Thurman with the incredible work ethic, he deserves so much of the credit as well for just being a self-made player and now a professional baseball player as Gavin Collins flies one to center field. One outing in minor league spring training already for Grayson Thurman. Could be more work today. He will be coming out of the bullpen as the minor league guys are still doing their spring training thing while the major league teams are already underway. Some two and three games in this first weekend in April. I mean, as, as a sports fan, it's really hard to top this time of the year. You've got the NCAA March Madness situation. You've got all the, uh, the baseball teams cranked up at every level, high school, college, and professional. If you're a golf fan, you have the Masters next week. There's even more going on. Every broadcast, I talk about all the great things going on here on campus at the University of Lynchburg with all the different sports. The best thing to do is to subscribe to the updates the text or email updates that you can receive from the University of Lynchburg Athletics Department to stay up to date on everything going on, including any of those potential schedule changes that you have in the spring. As we got some folks <laughs> watching, and I will uh, respond and say I'm not going to brag about any former coaching career of my own, as Josh Jorman will take the walk and head to first base. Holden Fiedler now, the catcher for Lynchburg. Bounced out to the shortstop in his first at bat. We've got two outs in the bottom of the third inning. Yeah, we've got beach volleyball going on on campus right now, which is the newest sport here at Lynchburg. Drove by, it looked like everybody was having a ball down there at the sand courts on campus. They're having a beach ball, we're told. Yeah, you probably should break out a beach ball, really, at beach volleyball. I know they don't play, they play with a normal volleyball, of course. But uh, it's worth checking out, fans, and you can see that on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Softball team in action on the road today at Ferrum, taking on the Panthers. Spring sports. And, and the best thing to do is participate. Get out here and join us at the ballpark. That's what we want to see. Great place to take in a game at Fox Field. 
Hunter West still on the mound for Eastern Mennonite throughout all these conversations about anything but the game being played as Holden Fiedler swings and misses. We'll direct our attention back to the diamond here. Now the umpire will clean off the plate. That's actually when we should be doing our talking points about all the other things going on when there's a delay in the game. Not when Hunter West is trying to strike out Holden Fiedler and Holden Fiedler's trying to keep the third inning going for Lynchburg. Josh Jorman leads off at first. Got on via the walk as West deals and Fiedler fouls that one back. Love watching Holden Fiedler work behind the plate. He is outstanding back there. Seems to be that all the pitchers love throwing to him, love the targets, love how he manages the game, blocks the balls. But he's a hitter too, 340 on the season for Holden Fiedler. On base at 431, he's driven in nine in 13 starts this year. Mm, close one there from Hunter West. Good eyeball from Holden Fiedler. Maybe the slight advantage as the catcher, knowing the zone there. Seems to make sense. That one was very close. Nice take from Fiedler. Two gone. That one was in the other batter's box. Much easier decision for Holden Fiedler. And now it's a full count with two outs, so Jorman will be on the move at first base. Hunter West, he's given up five hits and four runs, but pitched okay. Control seems to be better outside of that last wide one. Fiedler will foul that one over beside Coach Lucas Jones. I think it's a 2-2 count, so I beg your pardon, fans. The sun, it is a sunny day, as we saw the right fielder from Eastern Mennonite have to battle the sun on Gavin Collins' triple. And sometimes with that sun on the scoreboard out there in, in right center, the glare can make it hard to see the count. Holden Fiedler. Oh, what a stab at third base. Throw from the knees. How about that play? My goodness, Nick Arnold snares it with the leather and then doesn't even bother to get to his feet. Just chunks it over from both knees for the final out of the inning. Lynchburg strands one, no hits, no errors. And no Hornet runs in the bottom of the third. They lead 4-0 over Eastern Mennonite. Fourth inning set to begin here from Fox Field in Lynchburg. It's a 4-0 Hornet advantage. They did not score in the third. Three in the first, one in the second. Lynchburg's left four on base. Eastern Mennonite hasn't had any runs come across yet. Three hits, two left on. And we get to see Nick Arnold, who made that outstanding play at third base just a few moments ago to rob Holden Fiedler of a hit. It was a glove side dive in the hole and didn't even bother to get to his feet. Just threw it from the knees over there to get Fiedler. That's an interesting one for a third baseman. Sometimes it's harder to get to your feet and then shuffle across and throw. You feel like you might be better off just throwing it from the knees. 
I don't know that that's one that you practice too much, though, throwing from the knees. Maybe the great third basemans do. There's always the clips of Nolan Arenado going through his practice routine, and he seems to try the throws from, from every odd angle and all sorts of strange things that maybe only come up once in a season. Nolan Arenado is that guy that practices all those oddball type of plays. So whether it was through repetition or just raw skill, Nick Arnold made a great play. Speaking of a great play, Atkins almost got to that one. Oh, maybe a play at second to get Arnold. He was hustling around the bag there. Avery Neves, just a little slight hesitation and a bobble picking that ball up off the grass in the outfield. So Nick Arnold is in. Second hit of the day for Nick Arnold and his fantastic season continues. Entered the game at 425. And that average shows no signs of dipping with a two for two performance so far in this one. We'll wait for the official ruling as far as whether it was a single with an error or just a straight up double. I think we're calling it a double. The outstanding team up here in the press box. And I mean outstanding. Outstanding is not a good enough word to describe them, but as the game goes on, we'll think about another adjective. As we should keep a thesaurus up here. That's actually a great idea. Zach Potts, the full encyclopedia and thesaurus of pitches out there. Really, for Potts, it's fastball, slider, change up, and he throws all three in any count. I think that's what makes him so good. So we try to get things back on the rails here. Zach Potts, pitches to contact, can throw any of those three pitches in any count to any hitter, really. As you see, good movement on the fastball. Natty Solomon fouls that, fouls that one away. Solomon hit into the double play to end the threat in the first inning. But Zach Potts never rattled, always unbothered, regardless of situation or hitter. Runners on. Doesn't matter for Zach Potts. He's got the leadoff man, Nick Arnold, behind him now. Mm. Potts hit the spot there. Thought he did anyway. But the at-bat continues for Natty Solomon. And that's another thing that probably won't rattle a guy like Zach Potts too much. He's pitched so much in his career. He knows you're going to get some calls. You're going to miss some calls. That one further outside for Zach Potts, though. And now he'll have to challenge Natty Solomon. There is a base open, and it's a power hitter. Solomon, four home runs on the season. He's driven in 22. Natty Solomon with eight doubles as well. Second on the team behind Arnold, who now has 10 doubles. But those two, pretty formidable. How about that? Right on the edge there for Zach Potts. Strikeout in a big spot for Potts, his second K of the game. Probably thought it was the, the same spot as the 2-2 two -two pitch. But that's what good pitchers do. They don't get bothered by a call given or missed here or there. And Zach Potts comes back, makes a great pitch to get Solomon. One gone. Arnold still leading off at second. Nick Arnold is five for five in stolen base attempts this season. So a guy you can't exactly let wander off over there at the second base bag. Matthew Harding, one half of the brother combination in the game. As Potts will turn and throw to keep Arnold close. Matthew Harding is a junior from Keysville, Randolph Henry High School for EMU, and Jackson Harding in the starting lineup for Lynchburg, a senior from Randolph Henry High School. The Statesman, two former Statesmen, as Jorman and Harding go after that foul ball that came closer to the fan than the what ended up being a trio of Hornet defenders over there chasing it down as Ben Jones in the running to get over there to the fence line first. But it is just a foul ball. Matthew Harding now with a 1-2 count facing Zach Potts. One gone in the top of the fourth. Great baseball tradition at Randolph Henry High School where the Harding brothers hail from. And one of their former head coaches, legendary head coach Billy Catron, is now an assistant at Hampton Sydney, who was in town to take on Lynchburg earlier this week. 
part of a five in, in a row winning stretch for Lynchburg. And the Hornets are as Harding will watch that one go by for strike three. Third strike out of the game for Zach Potts. Now Lynchburg with two gone here in the top of the fourth. It's five in a row for Lynchburg. Believe they've won 10 out of their last 11. Yes, since March 11th, Lynchburg, 10 out of their last 11. Hornets will try to pick Arnold at second. A little bit closer that time than the first one. Just in this recent winning streak stretch, Roanoke is the only team to beat Lynchburg. That was a split in Salem between the Maroons and the Hornets. Lynchburg won game one. And they lost in game two to Roanoke, three to one. It's been the only game since March 11th that Lynchburg hasn't gotten double digit hits. The offense really coming alive for the Hornets here. Middle part of the season. Mid-March through now, Hornets swinging some very, very good lumber or metal if you prefer in this case. Potts deals that one inside part for a strike. 0-2 the count now with two outs. Potts has struck out two in a row. K2 looking in a row, which is interesting as well. See what Alec Riles can do. Fiedler wanted it in the dirt, didn't get there, but Potts with some evasive action and a great grab on the line drive up the middle to end the inning. So Zach Potts is okay. He'll get the line drive put out. It was a leadoff double, but Nick Arnold left stranded. EMU does not score, and it's still a 4-0 Lynchburg lead heading to the bottom of the fourth. I tried to get you some. Yeah, it's, it's 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 a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. No, it's just tea. That's tea. That's iced tea. There's like barely any caffeine. There's iced tea. Well, hey, I prepare for these double headers. I. It really is a party atmosphere up here in the press box, fans. We hope you're enjoying it. If you're a Lynchburg fan, you're probably enjoying the score line right now a bit more. 4 nothing. Hornets lead. Here comes Carson Atkins. A double in the, in the second inning as we review, as we review some of the in-between inning banter, which included me talking about beverages of choice, unsweetened tea, although we did have some coffee earlier. Watch out for Carson Atkins. He cares nothing about the broadcaster's beverages. He just wants to keep swinging a hot bat. Atkins was three for three against CNU Wednesday with a double, a homer, and a walk. Drove in four, scored three times himself. And that's what's so impressive about this grad student, Carson Atkins. He swings and misses at that. The, the, the great players, and I'm going to throw him in that category, they step up in the biggest time of need. Big game against a ranked opponent, Carson Atkins, delivered it was so impressive and really this last month or so for him has been outstanding fastball up in the zone Atkins takes that for a ball in the last four games basically a week that goes back to the doubleheader a week ago against Washington and Lee Atkins is now 11 for 15 fastball just missed catcher Matthew Harding thought it was there but Atkins 
lives to see another pitch. <laughs> it is it, Sunday baseball. I think it's great. Lynchburg's liked it so far, especially at home. Undefeated 10-0 and at Fox as Atkins will lift that one, but it is caught by the shortstop, Ethan Spraker. Soft contact, came off on a line there for Carson Atkins, but you could tell he sort of knew how he hit it based on his break out of the box there. Didn't come out of the box sprinting. Kind of saw the writing on the wall there. Cam Lane will hit. He's one for two on the day so far. Driven in one. Cam Lane enters the contest today, hitting 302. 13 hits on the season, now make it 14 with the one earlier this game. Cam Lane has three doubles in there. He's walked five times, struck out 11. Six hit by pitch for the all-time leader in that category at Lynchburg, Cam Lane. Got hit 19 times last season. He'll bounce this one to the pitcher. Hunter West seemed like he thought about tagging Cam Lane, and then he decided to turn up the alleyway and just beat him to the bag. It actually became kind of close there as Cam Lane popped the clutch and got into fifth gear. But it is an out. It's two quick outs. Brandon Garcia now up to bat, one for two. It's a five-game hitting streak for Brandon Garcia. It's kind of a, a broken-up, disjointed hitting streak. He had a hit against Christopher Newport on Wednesday, but then for the last games before that in the streak, you have to go back to March 11th against Bridgewater. Actually had three straight games of three hits in that stretch there for Brandon Garcia. But an injury has limited his participation this season. Oh, sends that one over the bag. Foul ball is the call. Very close down there. Don't envy the umpire on that one. And it's going to be the home plate umpire's call, but the field umpire is, is there. He's, he's trying to dodge and get out of the way of that one. So it ends up being an easier call for the home plate ump. Garcia's got an 0-2 count now with two away in the bottom of the fourth. Miss inside there for Hunter West, who has settled into things a little bit here. Got the first two outs of the game pretty quickly, and then Lynchburg exploded for three with two gone in the bottom of the first. Hornets add one in the bottom of the second. Nothing since. Mm. Garcia did not get out of the way of that one. Hit by pitch. Puts the freshman from Durham on first base. Here comes the All-American Avery Neves. The career walks leader at Lynchburg, the career home run leader, and now tied for the career run scored record with Joey Arthur, who I'll take it a little bit back, fans. I played with and against Joey Arthur, and he was a great player, a speedster in the outfield. Did have some power, too, Joey Arthur, but one of the all-time best at Lynchburg. And he was leading off on those teams that Lucas Jones played on in the early 2000s. So Arthur was setting the table, and guys like Lucas Jones, they were driving him in, and that's how Joey Arthur gets that run scored record that is getting ready to fall. Sorry, Joey Arthur, you're going to be in second place here pretty soon. Avery Neves will need one more run to pass Joey Arthur. But it's fun to talk about, and you, just so many great teams and players have come through the University of Lynchburg and formerly the artist, the artist formerly known as Lynchburg College. But you talk to people around, around town and around the school, and they, you just throw out so many names. You could spend the entire broadcast talking about former players. But it's fun to talk about these guys that are out there right now. Another golden age here for Lynchburg. I think they've got some guys that are going to go down as legends. Certainly the man in the batter's box right now, Avery Neves, will as one of the field umpires goes over to have a conversation with Lucas Jones in the batter's box, or the coach's box, rather. Not 100% sure what this one is about, fans. and I feel like I'm a pretty astute baseball fan. Not exactly sure what was said that made the umpire jog all the way over there to Coach Jones. Normally, when the coach is upset about something, he'll kind of go to the umpire, or, or they'll meet in the middle. That time, the field umpire ran all the way over there from second base as Coach Lucas Jones just kind of stood there and waited for him. Nice dirt ball read from Brandon Garcia to scamper to second. 
that is really, really good from Garcia. Doesn't go down as a stolen base, but it, it's basically a stolen base because Garcia is reading that ball out of the hand from Hunter West, seeing that's going to be in the dirt and then taken off there when it kicks just away from the catcher, just enough. Garcia may not even even waited for it to kick away on that one. He may have gone just by seeing that it was going to hit the dirt first. And that is a skill that Lynchburg practices, but there's so, so much of it's just the instincts as well. Neves has got a runner in scoring position now with two outs. Number 30, Avery Neves. Another ball in the dirt. Garcia is going to go. This one might be closer, but the throw was wide. So a little bit more of a gamble that time on the dirt ball read from Brandon Garcia. But there is a lot to be said for putting pressure on a defense, making that catcher get to the ball quickly, and then try to throw a strike down there 90-plus feet, and Harding unable to do it that time as Garcia slides into third safely. Now 90 feet away from scoring. Avery Neves, 2-2 the count with two gone. Line drive caught by the shortstop, and that's how the inning will end. No hits, one left on, no royal errors, no runs scored as we head to the top of the fifth inning at Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. It's the top of the fifth inning. The party continues up here in the press box. I think this is the most fun we've had this season at Fox Field in the LHSN press box. And, and let me amend that. It's not actually the LHSN press box. It is the Wooldridge press box, the Daniel E. Wooldridge class of 56 press box. LHSN just uses the press box. We, we rent it as it's a swing and a miss here from – Royals first baseman, or excuse me, uh, Royals second baseman, Cole Bashinsky. But it's always a great time here at Fox Field. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. We get off the rails sometimes. We, we, we need guardrails, and we can just hit those and bounce off. And eventually, when the car has so much damage, it'll stay between the lines because we won't be able to steer it anymore. Potts is steering that thing around as he gets another strikeout. Third strikeout in the last four hitters for Zach Potts. There was that line drive back to him that he had to catch to end the bottom of the fourth inning, or top of the fourth. Alex Galuciano in there, one for one on the day. He led off the third inning with a base hit. As Eastern Mennonite has picked up four hits, they've left three on. Compare that to Lynchburg, five hits, and they have stranded five. Runners left on base is one of those stats that it's interesting when you talk to coaches. Some coaches care about it, other coaches don't because it would make sense that if you're swinging the bats well and you're drawing walks, you're going to leave more runners on. If you get 20 hits, you're probably not going to score 20 runs. You're going to end up leaving more runners on base than you would if you only got four hits. So I don't think too many coaches are getting hung up with the left on base stat, but it is a fun one to talk about. And then you talk about leaving runners in scoring position. I think the good teams 
will have a better a better number, a better percentage in that category as far as driving runners in. Gavin Collins, another one on the move. This one skips before it gets to Jorman. And the right fielder Jackson Harding will hustle over to get it off the fence. But it, it will end up being an error on Collins. He had to hurry the throw. It was a chopper from Galuciano, who has good speed and was out of the box quickly. Collins knew he had to rush it. Release, maybe not quite clean. And it will end up being a runner on second for Aiden Miller, who had a sacrifice bunt in his first at bat. As number 12, Galuciano leads off there in your screen. Potts, inside fastball for a strike. Oh, won the count. Aiden Miller is a freshman from Stanton, Virginia, Riverheads High School. Another great baseball school like Randolph Henry. Riverheads has got some baseball state championships in the trophy case. Aiden Miller, a 5'7 freshman from Riverheads. 0-2 the count for Mr. Miller on Potts. Ground ball to the shortstop, Garcia. Times the footwork, gets the hop, throws across, safe. That's going to be an infield single for Aiden Miller. Brandon Garcia hung back slightly. I know he was trying to time up that hop. And really, he got, got the feet going. Good shuffle and throw, strong throw to first base. But not in time to get Aiden Miller. And now it's the center fielder, Logan Mason, one for two. So far on the afternoon, and another potential run scoring opportunity here for the Royals with the top of the order up. There looked like the cutter from Zach Potts that just missed. Mm, called strike. Ends up being a strike there on the appeal to the first base umpire. It is an 0-1 count now with one out. Jormand is just behind Aiden Miller at first base. Middle is not really double play depth, a little deeper than what you might consider the traditional double play depth. Gavin Collins is basically even with the bag at third. Infield shaded the opposite way on Logan Mason. One for two so far today. Logan Mason enters the game, hitting 366 on the season. Garcia not going to dive after that one. That's a base hit. Atkins up to throw, play at the plate, maybe. Jorman slipped as he was cutting it off. Runners at first and second hold, but the first run is a cross for Eastern Mennonite. That was Galuciano that scored. Back-to-back -back base hits for Eastern Mennonite, and now it's three consecutive that have reached. And Ethan Spraker up to bat now with runners at first and second. Holden Fiedler will go take a trip to the mound here and talk to Zach Potts. This has been a constant that we've seen all season fans. Holden Fiedler, really, really good timing as far as when to go out and talk to these pitchers, try to settle him down, give a little bit of a break, reminder of the game plan, especially with good hitters up. It's the two-hole man, Ethan Spraker. Then you got Nick Arnold behind. And sometimes it's the coaching staff telling Holden Fiedler, hey, go talk to him. But I think Fiedler at this point, so good on his own, understands the game, great feel. He'll go out there. He knows it's been three consecutive hitters that have reached. It's the fourth batter of the inning. Cole Bashinsky did strike out to begin this fifth frame for Eastern Mennonite. But just, just I think, a, a well-placed little mini time out there from Holden Fiedler to talk to Zach Potts. And more often than not, Potts has responded this season. Undefeated on the year, 6-0 and for Zach Potts. The ERA is at 2.79, and that's six wins and six starts. There's, there's not a no decision on the card there for Zach Potts. Swing and a miss. There's one out in the top of the fifth. The shutout is gone. Now Zach Potts trying to... Do what he told us about when he came to visit the press box, and that is just give up one run in the bad inning. Yeah, you're going to have a bad inning with some bad pitches or, or maybe even some bad breaks, but only give up one run. Here's Garcia in the hole, throws to second, safe there. Garcia got to it. A sharp sidearm toss to Ben Jones, but that was Logan Mason beating the throw into second. 
That one probably goes down as a fielder's choice. Infield single. We're calling it an infield single. Confirmation given. So now make it three straight singles for Eastern Mennonite. And this is exactly what Zach Potts talked about. Limit the damage. Make those bad pitches only cost you one run rather than multiple runs. I don't think you can say Potts has made a ton of bad pitches in the inning, though. There was the one hard single that went into center field. But for the most part, the ball has stayed on the dirt. Zach Potts with one out with the strikeout. That was to begin the inning. Here's Nick Arnold, two for two with a double. Good spot there from Zach Potts. The Eastern Mennonite dugout has come alive. More noise, more enthusiasm from the boys wearing the black jerseys today. Got the blue trim there for the Royals. 1-1 one, one the count on Nick Arnold. One of the best in the ODAC so far. Nick Arnold is hitting 425 on the season. Ten doubles, one triple, three homers, driven in 14. And made an outstanding defensive play earlier in the game as well. Nick Arnold is having a day so far. Two strikes against Zach Potts right now. He did go around. Yeah, strike three. Big pitch from Potts. Great location, too. Slap the handcuffs on him right there. Arnold is gone with a strikeout. I guess we'll call it a swinging strikeout. Natty Solomon now with two gone. Bases loaded, though. He grounded into a double play, and he struck out in his last at bat. Natty Solomon, who's got some great numbers on the season as well. Offensively, Eastern Mennonite really hasn't been bad this year. Pitching staff, if you look at the ERA there, they're giving up more than eight and a half runs per game. But offensively, they've done some good things as Natty Solomon will hit with an 0-1 count. Drives this ball into right center. That's down. One run is in. Second run will come around. No play at the plate. Atkins wisely throwing into second to keep Solomon on first base. Two runs single from Natty Solomon. Give Mr. Solomon 24 runs batted in on the season now. We got ourselves a ball game again. You had to imagine that Lynchburg wasn't just going to breeze their way to victory despite going up 3-0 after one inning and then 4-0 after the second. You had to assume the Royals weren't just going to go away quietly. There are some pitchers warming up in the Lynchburg bullpen. And here comes a visit from associate head coach, Travis Beasley. Potts is a guy you think he's probably earned himself a longer leash than maybe some other pitchers, and I think this is probably just another conversation to give Potts a little bit of a breather. Couple reminders. Natty Solomon, two-run RBI single. That was hit hard, too, into that opposite field gap, which is Always exciting to see, especially if you're a fan of good hitting. And yes, Zach Potts will remain in the game. But there are pitchers getting loose in the Lynchburg bullpen. Jack Batchmore is one of those guys. The outstanding left-handed closer. And um, just trying to get a look at who the other pitcher is that's warming up. Can't quite see it. But we'll get back to that in a minute. May not have anything to worry about here as Potts Looks to keep now the lead intact. The shutout is gone. The job now for Potts is get out of the inning with Lynchburg still on top. 4-3 advantage right now for the Hornets. But three have come across here in the top of the fifth inning for Eastern Mennonite. Matthew Harding. 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Harding fouls that one away. Got to be a great day for the Harding family and fans to watch both brothers in the starting lineup here. Jackson Harding playing right field as Matthew Harding catching for Eastern Mennonite will bounce one off the chest of Josh Jorman, but Jorman collects and steps on the bag for the final out of the inning. It was three runs on four hits. Two left on. There was one Lynchburg error in there. We've got ourselves a ball game again. Hornets still lead, but just a one-run advantage going to the bottom of the fifth.
We're broadcasting live on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. And our fearless leader and public address man today is Tim LaDuca, the hardest working man in show business. Tim had a full day of sports yesterday out there in the wind and rain, and he was trying to fix shot clocks. He was getting, uh-oh, hold on, hold that thought, as Benny Bombs puts a charge into one. Sun is an issue out there in right center, but the center fielder comes on to make the grab. Logan Mason, you could tell Alex Galuciano, the right fielder, was struggling, had the glove up. And how about the range from Logan Mason to sprint all the way over and help out with the catch there as Ben Jones is retired. Another loud deep out. It's another one for Ben Jones. When he gets out, the outfielders are typically involved. I'm not saying he never hits a ground ball. In, in fact, he reached with an error from the first baseman in his first at bat. But Ben Jones, the power that he displays is incredible. It was another one you feel like he just missed. And it was such a loud shot that it took the spotlight away from Tim LaDuca, who we were talking about is uh, just really, in all seriousness, fans, doing so many great things here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. And basically, any time you watch a broadcast, you've got him to thank. Jackson Harding now, the Lynchburg half of the Harding brothers in the starting lineup today. Jackson Harding hit 308 games last year, right at 295 this season. He'll bounce one of the second basemen, and that is out number two. And we keep waiting for the perfect timing to talk about some of the all-time great brother combinations in baseball and sport. But it looks like it's going to have to wait for another at bat as Jackson Harding has a quick ground out to the second baseman. Gavin Collins, one for two with a triple. Drove in two with that triple. Back in that three-run first inning for Lynchburg. Hornets still lead, but the advantage has been trimmed. Nice pitch there from Hunter West. And let's throw the spotlight back on Hunter West to give up three in the first inning. Gave up three, all of them with two outs, and give up four overall. You may be thinking, well, he's not going to make it to the fifth inning. But guess what? West is out there pitching effectively into the fifth. And there's two gone in the fifth inning. So I think you got to give some props to Hunter West for weathering that initial storm. Maybe he's found the control a bit more. West, he's hit one. He hit Brandon Garcia last inning. He's walked two. But for the most part, he's come after these Lynchburg hitters, forcing the Hornets to swing the bat, which they have done effectively at times. But West, I think, deserves high praise, at the moment anyway. And that's the challenge, I think, for the EMU coaching staff now, coached by Adam Posey. You're asking yourself, well, how long can West go? You don't want to get burned. All of a sudden, Lynchburg figures out Hunter West a little bit more as the game goes on. Gavin Collins out of the way of that one. It's now a full count now with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. Hunter West exclusively from the stretch, kicks and deals. Collins fires that one foul. It's so tough for a, for a coach, that decision. How long do you leave the starter? Lynchburg's going through that right now with Zach Potts. Gave up some runs in the fifth inning, but you know he's earned maybe a longer look. It's Gavin Collins will sort of fight one off and send it into right field. Galuciano makes that grab with two hands, and the inning is over. Fifth one is a quick one for Lynchburg. They still lead 4-3 to three here at Fox Field.
Alec Riles leads off. 6-7-8 due up for Eastern Mennonite, who has pulled within one. Zach Potts returns to the mound to begin the sixth inning. It's about the only knock on Zach Potts this season as he has given up some multiple run innings as Brandon Garcia will come on to make this one. Four out number one, one pitch, one out for Zach Potts there. Uh, Potts gave up multiple runs in an inning against Washington and Lee. Same thing a couple weeks ago against Bridgewater and also Roanoke. Let me go to the website and confirm all that for you folks. LynchburgSports.com. Are you on there? It's literally my favorite website right now in the season. And I think it's a great tool for a baseball fan because baseball, there is so many stats. There's always a number. And it's a big part of being a baseball fan is, is knowing not all the numbers, but having some of those, those numbers that really stand out. And you can talk about as Zach Potts will get his strike, strike swinging. So I think the smartphone is really just a great compliment to my fandom personally. I think some folks, they don't like it. They think, oh, you should be focusing on the game, not, not down there on your phone. But it adds to the game. So let's look at the game log here for Zach Potts. He gave up four earned against Washington and Lee. No, four runs. Two of them were earned. So amend that. It was four earned against Roanoke. Against Bridgewater, Zach Potts gave up three earned runs. One earned run against York. Two earned runs against Eastern. And the first start of the season, Zach Pot did not allow any earned runs in a win against Wilmington. So it's 6-0 and on the season for Zach Potts. He hasn't had that gem of a game that he wants yet, though. He hasn't had that game where he can get into the ninth inning. Hasn't had that game where he just feels like you're close to perfect, near perfect. And you can sense that he, he's, he's, again, got the high standard, which is what you want. But I think he's got a healthy balance that where he knows, hey, I don't have to be perfect to win the game. I don't have to hit every single spot. I don't have to completely keep the sheet clean. But he does have the high standard, and he wants to have that game where he completely shuts somebody down because he gets a strike out there on one of those wiffle ball sliders that he can throw. And I think that game's coming from Zach Potts. He continues to work. Bullpens look good. He feels good. He said he's 100% healthy. And you feel like the velocity should kind of tick up as the season goes on. And you get the feel, more confidence, all those things build. We know Zach Potts has pitched effectively in tournament baseball before, ODAC tournament and the NCAA regionals. So he's got it. I think that gem of a game is coming. I think he's got a shutout type of a game coming. But it's just so easy. And EMU, despite the record, has some really great offensive numbers. They're not an afterthought offensively. So that's the challenge for a starting pitcher like Zach Potts. It's kind of, uh, we've talked about it, I think, once. The penalty of, of excellence is what some folks will call it. And that means when you're good once, people expect you to be good again. Then they expect you to be even better. And if you're just good, all of a sudden it feels like a letdown, even though you may not have done anything wrong at all. And some of that is self-applied. I think with the great players, it is self-applied. They want to be better than before. They think their best game is still yet to come. And you get that impression when you talk to Zach Potts. Two ones the count. Two gone. The hitter, 2-2 two -two is the count. The hitter is Alex Galuciano. That one just missed from Potts. Number 28 from Oilville, Virginia, Goochland High School, just west of Richmond. A little bit more than just west. Mm, that one just missed from Potts. He wanted it, but it is a walk, two-out walk. Brings up Aiden Miller. Sacrifice bunt for Miller and also a single. That was last inning in the three-run fifth inning for EMU. We're in the top of the sixth now. Lynchburg looking for win 19 on the season. If Potts can get the win in this, he would be 7-0 in this 2023 campaign. Zach Potts was 8-4 last year. In 2021, he was 7-0 undefeated with 73 strikeouts and nine walks. Here's a bloop into center by Miller. Tough play. Atkins coming on, and he snares it. 
you had four Lynchburg players all around the baseball as Avery Neves was trucking in from left field, but it ends up being Carson Atkins, the center fielder that runs it down with the grab to end the threat. No hits, no runs, no errors, and one runner left on base for Eastern Mennonite in the top of the sixth. Lynchburg leads 4-3 to three on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Did we tell you how much fun this is? We, we are so glad that you are watching, live or after the fact. I, I always say broadcasting live on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network, and we are doing that, of course. But so many people watch the games after the fact as well. We thank you for doing that whenever you're tuning in. Josh Jorman, 0 for 1 on the day with a walk, facing Hunter West, who has now pitched into the sixth inning. Hunter West has given up five hits. Lynchburg has left five on. And here's a fascinating number. Hunter West hasn't given up a Lynchburg hit since the second inning. Feel like the Hornets are ready to explode and bust out here. But Hunter West has done a fabulous job keeping Lynchburg's potent offense in check. We gave you some of these numbers here. In the last 11 games, Lynchburg has scored double-digit runs five times. In the last 11 games, Lynchburg with double-digit hits ten times. Only game they didn't do that in this stretch was against Roanoke. Hornets have got multiple extra base hits in every game this season. Now, they have done that today. Triple from Avery Neves, triple from Gavin Collins, and a triple from Carson Atkins. So it's three extra base hits as Josh Jorman will watch this one float out of view for a ball. But this hot streak that Lynchburg has been on, really the better part of March, and now we are into April. This is the first ball game of April. It's going to be very busy. We're going to be busy here at Fox Field. We hope you'll make your plans to join us in person or on LHSN. And as always, stay up to date with everything by signing up for those email and text alerts. Josh Jorman will beat out that one to first base. We'll await for the official ruling from the official score. Of course, Lynchburg Hornets baseball and the athletics department online on all the social media destinations. If you're a fan, you got to get plugged in and connected there. Jorman is on. Holden Fiedler is up. And now we'll get a mound visit from the EMU pitching coach, Bailey Hall, another guy that was a very good pitcher for the Royals. Adam Posey was a very good hitter for the Royals. He's the head coach for EMU, 32 wins in his four seasons. And notably, Eastern Mennonite sprung the first round upset in the ODAC tournament a couple years ago, went on the road and beat Randolph Macon in the first round of the ODAC tournament. As we'll get a short visit, and now Holden Fiedler is back up. It's 109 pitches for Hunter West. The LHSN research department in full swing here, 109 pitches for Hunter West, which feels like a lot. At this point in the season, though, 
you got to imagine West has got the arm strength built up. Holden Fiedler will put down a sacrifice bunt. West off the mound to field on pitch number 110. And it's an out. Carson Atkins on a absolute heater right now. Atkins is 11 for 16 in his last five games. That stretch dates back to one week ago today. 11 for 16 with four doubles and two home runs. In the last month, Atkins has four homers. Josh Jorman leads off second base. Atkins will watch that one come in for a strike. Pitch 111 for Hunter West. Just back to that pitch count. I think it's different for everybody. But we're into early April, so the arm strength, the fitness should be there. A lot of times for pitchers, they're finding out nowadays it's it's the legs and the hips and how tired they get. You lose something in the lower half, and then all of a sudden the arm is at a different angle. That's when that gets some weird stress that it's not used to, and you present a possible injury opportunity. So, yeah, they're finding more and more things out with the new technology about pitchers and how they can pitch without – getting injured and how they can pitch more effectively. Hunter West has been very effective so far. A little bit of a rocky start, but he's settled down. Carson Atkins hit the double in the second inning, came around to score. That is run number four right now for Lynchburg, and they lead four to three. Atkins with a good rip there to foul that one back in our direction. Carson Atkins has always contributed with the glove in the outfield as well. We saw him come on and make a great grab to end the top half of the sixth. Now trying to do it with the bat. One two count on Carson Atkins, one gone. West deals, Atkins will flare another one foul. Seems like Atkins, even, even when he doesn't get a hit, he's close, swings like that, fouling ball straight back, right on it. Hard to fool him right now, this stretch that he's got going on. 17 hits in his last nine games. West will send that one in. Atkins grounds to the third baseman, Arnold. Great grab and throw. And it's 5-3 for out number two. The leadoff man, Cam Lane, will step up again. He is the designated hitter. He's one for three today with a single. And he drove in one. He drove in Carson Atkins in that second inning. Could be a big one here for Cam Lane. 13th start of the year for Mr. Lane. He's got 14 hits in those 13 starts. Fastball just missed. Cam Lane was third on the team in hits last season with 52. He had a 13 game hit streak in there. Two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Off speed from Hunter West is a strike. Hunter West, one and four in eight starts. 24 and two-thirds innings pitched this season. So he's going to be over 30 after this outing is done. Lane swings on that one. Can't get it by the second baseman, but it gets by the first baseman. Run will score on the error, and it's just a question of who it's on, the second baseman or the first baseman. Cam Lane putting some pressure on the defense, busting it down the line again. It was a play where the second baseman, Cole Bashinki, had to range over to his glove side, make a throw on the run. But the inning continues as Brandon Garcia will come up. One for two with a hit by pitch. If you're Hunter West, probably feel like you've been dealt a little bit of bad luck. Cam Lane will take off, throw to second. Pulled the shortstop to the right field side of the bag, and Cam Lane is in with a stolen base. That is bag number Four stolen for Cam Lane this season. Four steals. Lynchburg as a team now with 29 swipes. 
29 for 35. Brandon Garcia rolls this one to the first baseman, and the inning is done, but Lynchburg does add one run to the total, and they now lead 5-3 as we go to the seventh inning here at Fox Field. Eastern Mennonite up in the top of the seventh. It's the leadoff hitter, Logan Mason. Two hits, two for three. Logan Mason, part of a nice offensive output for Eastern Mennonite. They scored all three in the top of the fifth inning. EMU, leadoff hitter, is three for six so far today. And one of those was Logan Mason leading off the game with the base hit. Eastern Mennonite. Let's talk about those run those those numbers some more. Five for sixteen with runners on. That's good for three thirteen. Lynchburg, for comparison, is three for eleven with runners on base. Two seventy three. Swing and a miss from Logan Mason. Two strikes now with nobody out here in the top of the seventh. One hundred and twenty one pitches for Logan. West, the pitcher for Eastern Mennonite. Zach Potts is closing in on the century mark. In fact, that may have been pitch number 100 for the senior from Goochland High School. As he gets set for the one two. Soft one to the left side. Collins comes over to cut it off. Nice scoop there by Josh Jorman, using that big first baseman's mitt to work through the low one and get out number one. Ethan Spracker is back up in the top of the seventh inning. Spraker fouls that one over to the left side. This is game number one, by the way, fans. It's a double dip. Most of our weekend ODAC games are double headers, but it's always worth noting that, I think. Also, happy Palm Sunday to anybody observing today. As we come close to the Easter season, I think that means Lent is coming to a close, so we can eat donuts again, which we have already done. Um, but it's just, again, a fun time of the year. Everything's greening up outside with the grass. We're getting some color on the plants and the trees. Just so enjoyable here on campus at the University of Lynchburg. And we hope you're enjoying springtime wherever you are. Ethan Spraker, 283 average in 23 games played. He's driven in 10, scored 22 times, which is a pretty good number there at the top of the lineup. It's an Eastern Mennonite lineup that is pretty good. They hit 307 as a team last year. Eastern Mennonite, just 288 team average right now this season, but you can see why their offense is well thought of. They only score 5.96 runs per game. Comes a two strike pitch from Potts, got him. It was the ball moving away from Ethan Spraker there. You can call it a slider, call it a cutter, whatever you want. Same concept for Zach Potts. It moves away from the right handed hitter. So hard to see out of his hand, Zach Potts. In fact, Watching the 
broadcast where Lynchburg played Washington and Lee, the Washington and Lee broadcasters were, were having a hard time even identifying when Potts was throwing a fastball or the cutter slash slider. And that's not a knock on them. That's just how good Zach Potts is. And if you get the weird camera angle or you're sitting at, at a weird spot, you really, you really can't tell out of the hand. And that's what a good slider does. It looks like a fastball. The release is fastball-like, just a little turn at the end. As we get a foul ball that came back in play, it'll give us a few more minutes to talk about the slider. And so many great practitioners of that slider over the years. I think Steve Carlton was one of the early ones that people started talking about the slider rather than a curveball because it is a different pitch. It's a different way to throw it, different action. Strike there from Zach Potts with the fastball. And it is hard for a hitter to identify a good slider. Some of the hitters talk about seeing a dot. You might see those seams to come together, and when they rotate, they form a dot on the ball. Brandon Garcia, backhand, plants, throws. Safe at first, though. That would have been highlight real stuff for Brandon Garcia. Instead, it's an infield single for Nick Arnold, his third hit of the day. Arnold is on for Natty Solomon, who had a two RBI hard single into right center in the three-run fifth inning. See how Potts pitches Mr. Solomon here after giving up the line drive in his last at bat. Potts has struck out Solomon looking once, and then Natty Solomon bounced into a ground ball double play in the first inning. Might be it for Zach Potts. Yeah, Coach Beasley with the signal there to the field umpire. I think we're going to get to see Jack Batchmore here in just a moment, fans. So Zach Potts will exit with a lead. He pitched effectively into the seventh inning. He'll get a nice round of applause. And we'll catch our breath here and tell you about Jack Batchmore on for another save situation for Lynchburg. Batch has been pretty good in these so far this year. We'll talk about it next on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. We're ready to see Jack Batchmore, number 48, the senior left-hander for Lynchburg. He has been dominant on the season. 3-0 on the mound, four saves. It's 11 appearances for Batchmore, 29 innings pitched. Here comes a great split K to walk ratio, 38 strikeouts to just seven walks this season for Jack Batchmore. He'll start things with a low throw pickoff attempt to first base. And the runner, Nick Arnold, is back easily. Batchmore has assumed this closer role from the guy we mentioned last season, Grayson Thurman. 13 saves last year for Thurman. Don't know if Batchmore will get there, but he's on his way with four, and he's got three wins in as well. And Lynchburg has shown that they will go to Batchmore in any situation. They'd love to save him for these championship innings, the seven, eight, nine innings. But they've gone to him before that, more of that stopper role. That's a, a phrase that we've used a few times for Batchmore. The closer implies you're going to come in late, maybe even just the ninth inning. That's how major league teams use the closer now. So Batchmore, I think, 
We give him a little bit more than that as he will enter really at any point in the game. Any situation, he's ready. And he does have starts in his career as well, 13 starts. He's made starts multiple times in NCAA tournament play, regional action. Batchmore gets an early strikeout, swinging on Natty Solomon. So Batch does the job with the K and will head to the bottom of the seventh inning. Lynchburg leads by two, five to three advantage over Eastern Mennonite. New pitcher in the game for Eastern Mennonite. It's number 33, Cooper Thomas. He takes over for Hunter West, who gave up five runs. But Hunter West didn't give up a Lynchburg hit since the second inning. Innings three through six, Lynchburg did not get any hits. They did get the run across in the sixth inning to add to this total. It's a 5-3 Lynchburg lead at the moment, but Really great stuff from Hunter West. I think maybe a slightly underappreciated just because he did give up three runs in the first inning, but really settled in nicely. Good day for Hunter West. He ends up pitching six complete and now hands it over to Cooper Thomas, who enters with a two-run deficit, and he'll have to face Avery Neves. So I, I, I like the decision there by... Coach Adam Posey and his staff, we talked about even though a guy is pitching effectively, after you give an offense like Lynchburg so many looks at somebody, they seem to have better chances. And Avery Neves is a guy, uh, if you could, I think you'd throw a different pitcher at him every time if you had the ability to, just to try to keep him off balance. Neves is up there working against Cooper Thomas. Cooper Thomas is 0 for 0 on the season. This is appearance number eight. He does have one start, so most of the work out of the bullpen. ERA is over 10. You can see he throws out of that low three-quarter, kind of a long arm action. Gets the long glove out in front of you as well. Some pitchers keep that glove hand 
kind of in tight to the body. Thomas kind of throws that glove at you, a little deceptive with the delivery here. Watch it on this one. Yeah, it kind of comes out with the open hand, ground ball to short. Spraker's got it. And he'll fire to first for out number one. 6-3 for Avery Neves. Brings up Ben Jones. Ben Jones has flown out twice. He reached on an error by the second baseman in the first inning. Did come around to score in that first inning. Ben Jones, the man whose power we are all marveling at. Just a freshman, but he hits the ball hard like a senior, like a veteran. Got a lot of pop in that bat. Seems like every out is loud and it chases an outfielder around. Ben Jones came into the game hitting 394 with four homers and four doubles. He's also walked seven times in there as well. So another guy that fits right in with that offensive philosophy for Coach Lucas Jones. Get a good pitch to hit. Don't swing at the bad pitches. Good movement on that fastball from Cooper Thomas. And now we have a 0-2 count on Ben Jones. Jackson Harding would be due up next. And Collins, Jorman, Fiedler, and Atkins. No subs in the lineup yet for Lynchburg. No subs in the lineup yet for Eastern Mennonite. But a pitching change apiece for each ball club in a two-run game. Lynchburg 7-1 and one in ODAC play. Eastern Mennonite 1-8 and eight in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. That won a victory against Virginia Wesleyan. Jones is out swinging, and here comes Jackson Harding. Still noteworthy, Lynchburg no hits since the second inning. Gotten on a few times. Hit by pitch in there for Brandon Garcia. It's a couple errors last inning that led to a run coming across for Lynchburg. Hornets had a sacrifice bunt in there as well. Jackson Harding hitting in the five spot today is 0 for 2 with a walk. Scored a run in that three-run first inning. And Harding's brother right behind him catching there. Matthew Harding, the catcher for Eastern Mennonite. Jackson Harding playing right field for Lynchburg today. He's played quite a bit of second base for Lynchburg this season. And that's still an option for the Hornets. Great thing about having a Swiss Army knife kind of guy like Jackson Harding. He can play a lot of different positions. Wonder if he could catch like brother Matthew Harding. I'm sure he's gotten down in the backyard or out there in the bullpen for Matthew wanted to mess around and throw some pitches at some point. That's bound to have happened for this brother combination. Uh, All-time great brother combinations in baseball. Watch out, Jackson Harding will fire one under the second baseman's glove. Bashinke's been under pressure over there all day. Lynchburg's had a lot of balls in his direction. And we're going to call it a hit. So that's the first hit for Lynchburg since the second inning. Hornets had two hits in the first frame, three in the second. And now their sixth hit of the ball game comes in the bottom of the seventh with two outs off the bat of Jackson Harding. Harding leads off at first. Let's see if he'll steal on his brother. Of course, Cooper Thomas is in the equation as well as the pitcher. And most baseball minds will tell you that the, the pitcher has got a big part of that equation in the stolen base. Holding runners so important for a pitcher. And then the delivery time to home. Doesn't really matter how quick you are as a catcher and how good the arm is if the guy's halfway there by the time you get the baseball. Thomas does kind of have a long motion to home, maybe a threat for Jackson Harding to possibly run on here. 1-1 one, one the count with two outs on Gavin Collins. Harding takes that lead at first, regular lead. Long hold from Cooper Thomas. That's another way that pitchers can keep those runners close is Gavin Collins. Little knife one through the left side. Back-to-back -back singles now for Lynchburg. Maybe the bat's warming up a little bit here. Jackson Harding is in scoring position at second for Josh Jorman. Gavin Collins at third base, or first base. 
Great season for Josh Jorman. Hitting 359. He's driven in 18. And worth mentioning Josh Jorman's performance on Wednesday against Christopher Newport. He started the game on the mound. Just his second pitching appearance of the season. They've both been midweek starts. And Josh Jorman deserves high praise for how he went out there and pitched against a ranked opponent. He really shut the captains down. Off-speed stuff in any count. Pitched effectively with the fastball as well. And just, you would think Josh Jorman had made about 10 starts this season based on how composed he was on the mound. It was really impressive to watch. And at times, he just bamboozled Christopher Newport. Seemed like they didn't know what they were facing out there at times. And really, it's weird to throw a guy in only his second game in such a key matchup, but I would argue that Christopher Newport maybe didn't have a big scouting report for that reason. Josh Jorman, kind of an ace in the hole, secret weapon category for Lynchburg. Maybe not such a secret now after that performance, but it was really, really impressive what Josh Jorman did. And then we had Tim LaDuca giving us the Wonderful insight about how Josh Jorman spent most of the summer just working on his pitching. Didn't hit a whole lot for some of his summer ball teams. Just worked on the mound stuff, and it all paid off on Wednesday in Lynchburg's 14-6 victory over Christopher Newport. That avenged one of Lynchburg's losses earlier in the season, too, by the way, fans. Lynchburg has lost three, one to CNU, one to Roanoke, one to Piedmont on the opening weekend of the season. So that man who pitched so great on Wednesday, Josh Jorman, is swinging the bat right now. He's made some great defensive plays at first base again today. You say that every every game. Just get that one on tape. Great pick from Josh Jorman, or dug out from Josh Jorman. He really is outstanding over there with the first baseman's mitt. 3-1 the count for number 25, Josh Jorman. Getting all the accolades here and one at bat. See if he can drive a runner in, too. Ball four, close call. Jorman knows the zone and trots down to first base. The bases are loaded for Holden Fiedler. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh as Lynchburg knocking on that door to try to break things open here in the bottom of the seventh. The Hornets kicked the door in and broke it off the hinges in the big inning against Christopher Newport. I think here they would Settle for just, just breaking the door open. Fastball for a strike from Cooper Thomas. Fiedler's got a look now, timed up. That's one thing about facing a new pitcher. You might be a little bit more apt to take that first pitch. Just get the timing, get the look. Now Fiedler's ready to work with the bases loaded. Jorman on first. Collins at second. Jackson Harding at third. Nice aggressive secondary lead from Harding down there at third base. You could see that in the camera shot as Harding is ready for anything that could potentially get by his brother, the catcher for Eastern Mennonite, Matthew Harding. Cooper Thomas set and ready to go. Harding off the handle. Tough play for the shortstop. Throws across, and the inning is done. Hornets strand three. They did get two hits in there. No Eastern Mennonite errors, and our score remains 5-3 as we head to the eighth inning at Fox Field.
Feels like crunch time here in the top of the eighth inning. Eastern Mennonite down by two, but certainly not out. The catcher, Matthew Harding, is up to try to get things started. He's facing Jack Batchmore, who came on in relief of Zach Potts. I think the official line for Potts is going to be six and two-thirds, gave up nine hits and the three runs in the top of the fifth. Uh, should be all earned. Might be one earn, unearned run in there. I'm going to check the official stats at lynchburgsports.com. I'm going to check the official line for Zach Potts. And uh, we'll, we'll report back to you as far as that is concerned, fans. It is a 5-3 ball game here. It's number 11 Lynchburg, 11th, 11th ranked in the country for the Hornets. They've been in the top 25 all season, kind of hovering around that 12 and 11 mark. Zach Potts, we've got him for no earned runs, six and two thirds. The computer says zero earned runs for Zach Potts. He struck out eight, walked one. Again, the control number's fabulous for Potts. And there's a strikeout for the man on the mound right now, Jack Batchmore. Matthew Harding is down on strikes. So just, yeah, when we recreate the inning there for, for Potts in the fifth, that's where EMU scored three. Struck out the first batter, then there was an E5, and then three consecutive singles. Another strikeout in there for Potts, and then I believe the third out was down on strikes as well. But the computer doesn't lie, fans. The computer knows the earned run situations much better than I do. That's one thing as a baseball fan I really need to get a further grasp on as far as when the run is earned and when it isn't. Jack Batchmore is earning it on the mound right now. Batchmore is... A lefty, pitches mid-80s. He could juice it up to the upper 80s or touch 90, but really just pitches in the mid-80s. Throws that breaking ball in any count. It's got that steep angle. It's, it's not quite the 12-6 drop. Saw it right there as that one dives into the dirt. That one really was the 12-6 out of the hand from the lefty, Jack Batchmore. Works with the change up as well, very effective. And another guy, much like Zach Potts, that just never seems bothered, never seems rattled. Built for these situations, I think. Pop up to Ben Jones at second. He'll pull that in. We have a change at second base. It is not Ben Jones. It is Ryan Long now playing second base. The computer should have alerted me to that change as well. But <laughs> Ryan Long, apologies to the Ryan Long fan clubs who, uh, the fan club who watched him make that grab there. There's the curveball in for a strike. From Batchmore. We got that part of it right. Jack Batchmore still on the mound. Looking for another save. 1-1 one, one the count with two outs. Cole Bashinsky, the batter. Second baseman for EMU. Swings through that one. He's 0 for 3 with two Ks. And Bashinsky staring another one in the face here. Unless he can get this ball in play against Jack Batchmore. Fiedler, away target. Ooh, direct hit from Batchmore there, but it was just off the mark. 2-2 the count. Great pitch from Batchmore. I think it was right where he wanted it. And now they'll go back to work with 2-2 and two outs. Fouled off by Cole Bashinsky, seven-hole hitter. So Eastern Mennonite is going to get a chance to get at least some of the top of the order back up here at some point in this game, either this eighth or maybe the ninth inning. I think as a coach, that's all you can ask for. Conference game, ranked opponent. Give yourself a chance in the ninth inning to maybe be in the fight there. Swing and a miss from Cole Bashinsky, and he is out for his third strikeout of the day. It's two of three struck out in the inning for Jack Batchmore. Lynchburg leading 5-3, looking to add an insurance run in the bottom of the eighth.
Carson Atkins walking into the dirt circle here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Lynchburg leading 5-3. Insurance runs would be much appreciated here. Jack Batchmore's mentality, I'm sure he doesn't care one way or the other, but anybody would tell you that a bigger, the bigger the lead, the better here for Lynchburg as they lead 5-3. Still facing Cooper Thomas for Eastern Mennonite, the second pitcher that they have used. Hunter West started and pitched six strong innings, gave up five hits, five runs. It is a doubleheader, so always worth mentioning that you get out of that first. Watch out for Carson Atkins. Did he get another one? This in the air to left. Left fielder with a long run and a diving grab at the line. And the out is called. What a play by Aiden Miller, who really got on the horse there to run that one down at the line. Carson Atkins thought he had another double. That one just hung up in the air slightly. I think that's the other frustrating part for Atkins. He feels like he just missed another homer, really. And now Aiden Miller is not getting up. He's slow to get up. We'll get a member of the training staff from Lynchburg to get over there and look at him. He's on his hands and knees. And now the other outfielders are over to check on Aiden Miller. And this is where we should be doing the long-winded conversations about lynchburgsports.com. Make sure you sign up for the email and text alerts. The link is at the bottom of every recap. When you see those recaps online, whether it's the website or social media, click through, get the, get the link to sign up for the text and email alerts here from Lynchburg Athletics. And I just love everything that they're doing here on LHSM. I watch all the other sports, so much fun. Couple great lacrosse games yesterday on campus and all sorts of other fun stuff happening. Aiden Miller is on his feet now, getting looked at by two thirds of the team and also a member of the Lynchburg training staff. And applause comes out from the fans as it looks like Aiden Miller will stay in the game. Aiden Miller's due up second in the top of the ninth for Eastern Mennonite. That's a, a also a factor, I would say. You can s just see it in the corner of your screen there to the left. Aiden Miller just kind of figuring out something. Don't want to speculate on what the injury was. The fact that he's staying in the game means we probably don't even need to speculate. Cameron Lane is up for Lynchburg. On twice, once with a single, once with an error by the second baseman. Cam Lane entered the game, hitting 302. 14 hits on the season. He is the all time leader in hit by pitch here at Lynchburg. Cam Lane has been plunked 50 times in his career. That's in 136 games. Lynchburg has been hit 33 times this season. It's just over one and a half per game. Last year, Lynchburg as a team got hit 107 times. That's over two per game. And that's a part of their offense as well that I think is underappreciated. Not that they're leaning into pitches, but they don't get out of the way. And they seem to understand how to roll with the pitch and protect themselves and wall up. Same way a boxer sort of rolls with the punches. That one came in on the edge for Cam Lane. Same way those good boxers can roll with the punches and you and you take the hit, but it isn't as damaging. That's what those good hitters and those savvy players can do when the baseball hits them. And you really want to take it in the in the bicep or the tricep or the back somewhere where you got some meat. This one fouled off to left. It's going to stay in play for Nick Arnold, and he makes another outstanding defensive play at the fence line to pull that in. Nick Arnold had a diving stop and then a throw from his knees earlier in the game. This time, he reels one back in. Foul territory pop-up catch for out number two. Brandon Garcia will look to get things going with two outs. And think back to the bottom of the first inning. That's how Lynchburg got those three runs. They were all scored with two away. And that's why those good teams and those good hitters, even with two outs, it's not like they're just ready to go play defense. They're trying to get on like Brandon Garcia did right there. 
off the end of the bat. And there is a cap on the end of that bat. As this trained broadcaster struggling to keep it together here in the press box. Avery Neves is up with a runner at first base. Always a serious situation when Mr. Neves walks into the box. 5-3, Lynchburg leads. Neves out in front of that one. He'll foul it off the screen in front of the Lynchburg dugout. 0-1 oh, the count. Two gone. Neves has got a triple. That was, again, in the bottom of the first inning. It came with two outs. Started the rally. Tripled. Actually scored on a pass ball. And then Lynchburg went on to score two more in that first inning. Garcia, threat to run. Oh, hung out in no man's land. He'll scramble back and the pickoff throw from Harding, not in time. Yeah, Garcia, another one of those dirt ball reads. That's what we were talking about earlier. He saw the breaking ball out of the hand from Cooper Thomas, extended the lead just a little bit, and then Matthew Harding catches it clean and has a chance to throw. So, so that's the danger of that dirt ball read. If you get it wrong, you leave yourself, uh-oh, here's another one right here, and he got him. Harding one-hopped it. Garcia's going to hustle back. Great baseball by Brandon Garcia. And it's an extension of what we've just been talking about. He sees the ball in the dirt, extends the lead. When it kicks away at all, he continues to second. That time he got caught in no man's land again as Harding with a little backhand pick, something you'd see the shortstop do maybe. You're not expecting the catcher to do that. You're expecting the catcher to slide and block. But Harding with good glove work there and then – Really got caught in no man's land. In hindsight, the, the only thing Harding could have done is maybe run at Garcia and try to get him in a pickle that way. Instead, he just threw to second base, and, and Garcia read that nicely and got back. It, it's, it's good baseball all the way around, really. Again, not to criticize Harding, but maybe if he had to do it all over again, he might have pump faked at second and then run at Brandon Garcia, something like that. It's a full count now on Avery Neves as we discuss possible pickles and base running situations. Garcia on the move here on the pitch. Neves swung on and belted. Center fielder may have a play. Going back, hauls it in on the track. Wow, that is big. Logan Mason with a run-saving grab, and he robs Avery Neves of another extra base hit. Hornets will try to close it down in the ninth inning. They lead by two over Eastern Mennonite at Fox Field. Jack Batchmore looks to close it down for Lynchburg. Hornets looking for win number 19 on the season. It would be conference victory number eight for Lynchburg. Hornets have won five in a row, and they're undefeated at Fox so far this season at 10 and 0. Eastern Mennonite will send 8-9-1 to the plate against Jack Batchmore, who has been absolutely outstanding in these situations this season. He has four saves. Batchmore has three wins on the year as well. That's in 12 appearances, counting this one here today. And Batchmore's got that rubber arm. He pitched really great on Tuesday, but he was ready for Wednesday against CNU if needed. And today would be the same situation for Batchmore. It'll be two plus innings. It'll be two and a third. Strike out there as Fiedler will have to pop out. Tosses to first, out number one. It would be two plus innings of work for Batchmore but he would be available in game two if needed. 
Another one of those guys that always wants the ball. I think he's got the rubber arm. I think he feels good anyway, but I get the impression when you hear about the stories about Batchmore that even if his arm was hurt, he would just say, hey, I'm good to go anyway. All the pitchers on the staff for Lynchburg, very, very open and honest with the coaching staff about how the arm feels. And that's a big part of Lynchburg's success as well. No hero ball from them. If you don't feel good, there's other guys behind you that can take that ball and get the job done. Batchmore gets a pretty quick out there on Aiden Miller. He flies out to center, and now Lynchburg is one away. Logan Mason, he's the center fielder that made that outstanding run to track down a potential extra base hit from Avery Neves. He'll try to keep the game going for the Royals, who trail by two. We're expecting to see Brandon Pond start game two for Lynchburg. Not official or anything. Lineups haven't been submitted, but that's what we are anticipating, fans. And we'll take about 30 minutes in between games to let everybody relax and let those starting pitchers get warmed up. But we hope you'll come back and join us for game number two. 1-1 one, one the count. Now 1-2 with two gone. Let's see what Jack Batchmore does here with two strikes to try to lock it down for Lynchburg. Breaking ball in the dirt. Mason hits it over the head of the second baseman, Ryan Long, and the game will continue. Tying run is in the batter's box now in the form of Ethan Spraker. Third hit of the day for Logan Mason. Congratulations to Mr. Mason, and Lynchburg will, I'm sure the coaching staff uh, have a short discussion about what the game plan should be to Logan Mason in between breaks. Breaking ball there from Jack Batchmore. We're hearing that it might be Wesley Arrington starting game two today for Lynchburg. He has pitched outstanding this season. Very effective Tuesday. Cap job here. Batchmore's going to have to get over. Jorman field, sidearm throw, play it first. Got him, and there's the victory for Lynchburg. Jorman coming off the bag to field. Batchmore getting over. Lynchburg gets win number 19 on the season, 11-0 at home. The win streak is up to six in a row. Eastern Mennonite falls to 5-19, and 1-9 in the ODAC. They've now lost six in a row, but a chance to change all that here in just a moment. Game two is on the way next. Lynchburg wins this one, 5-3. You saw it all live on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
getting set for game two here from Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. Some food enjoyed during the break between games one and two, but a lot of discussions about food between games one and two. Ballpark food, that is a real talking point, fans, about ballpark food and the, the different things you can get out at the ballpark and the it, take me out to the ball game, buy me some peanuts and Cracker Jacks, right? It's all part of the fun here. It's a Sunday, first one in April, and it's game two of the day between Lynchburg and EMU. Hornets win the first one, 5-3. It was Zach Potts staying perfect on the season, his seventh win of the year, and Jack Batchmore gets another save for Lynchburg. That'll be save five on the season for Jack Batchmore. Offense, don't want to say sputtered for the Hornets, but it wasn't the usual offensive explosion that we're used to. It was just six hits from Lynchburg. They did leave 10 on. And credit Hunter West for a pretty good outing for Eastern Mennonite. He kept the Royals in the game. But Lynchburg just too much in game one. It ends up being victory number six in a row for the Hornets. They moved to 19 and three, eight and one in the ODAC, and now 11 and zero at James C. Fox Field. But we are on to game two, and we will see Wesley Arrington for Lynchburg. He'll be the starter out there. Lineup slightly different. It looks a lot like the lineup that Lynchburg used against Christopher Newport. We'll get into that. EMU has made some changes as well. They will start Brendan Barrett on the mound. And we'll talk about Brendan Barrett when we get a look at him as it's going to be Wesley Arrington starting for Lynchburg. He did start Tuesday against Hampton Sydney and pitched very effectively. Wes Arrington 2-0 this season. He has five starts now. This will be start number five. It'll be appearance number eight for Wesley Arrington. We thought maybe it might be Brandon Pond's turn to get the ball. He's been the number two again for Lynchburg with some injury issues for Nick Matfield. Pond was out to begin the season. Here's a ground ball swung on by Logan Mason. Tough play by Garcia. Oh, what a pick over there at first by Eric Hyatt. Eric Hyatt playing first base today. He had three hits in the win against Christopher Newport. He'll get to start at first in game two here, and he makes a nice defensive play to help out Brandon Garcia, who did well to hurry the throw over there to get the leadoff man, Logan Mason. Back to the Lynchburg pitching staff. Potts and Matfield were the one-two weekend guys to begin this season. You can't even make the comments here as it's EMU. Swinging early, swinging often. Two pitches, two ground ball outs. Wesley Arrington, efficient, pitching to contact, getting ground balls. See how long of a look Nick Arnold takes at Wesley Arrington. But Arrington has been a midweek guy. He has made some appearances out of the bullpen. He can start, he can relieve, he can do it all for Lynchburg. Got that kind of short arm action, buggy whip type of stuff. And looks like Brandon Pond is available. Lynchburg would like to use some other relievers, but we have gotten the word that Pond is available here in game two against EMU, but they would like to save him for later on this week. That's the plan right now. That's plan A, and pitching coaches have got multiple plans in their head. That's what keeps you up at night as a pitching coach and just a head coach in general, thinking about those pitching moves and the other moves and who's going to eat up the innings and what happens if this guy can't finish an inning, etc. All those things are stuff that coaches think about on a constant basis, even in the offseason. But it's Wesley Arrington right now on the mound. 4.57 earned run average. He is 2-0. and This is start number five, appearance eight, 24 strikeouts to only seven walks. So another guy for Lynchburg with outstanding control. Another guy that pitches to contact. We saw that the first two hitters. One, two, the count. Mm, nasty breaking ball there. The battery mate is number 18, Sean Pokerock. Sean Pokerock with a great performance Wednesday against Christopher Newport as well. He is working with Wesley Arrington. And Pokerock, another great defensive catcher, but an offensive threat as well. Got the one knee set up here, ready for Wesley Arrington. That ball belted into left. Neves coming on, makes a grab at the belt to rob Nick Arnold of a hit. The first inning is quick. The first half of the first inning, anyway. 
It'll be three up, three down for EMU, and here come the Lynchburg Hornets in the bottom of the first inning. Brandon Barrett will start it on the mound for Eastern Mennonite, number four, Brendan Barrett. He comes in with the 8.59 earned run average, one and two on the season. This is start number one for Mr. Barrett. He has appeared out of the bullpen eight times this year. He's only got 14 plus innings under his belt. So, so we got a change in the starting lineup, fans. It's number 41, Keenan Fullwood. This makes more sense. It'll be start number four for Fullwood. So apologies to Brendan Barrett. I missed the one number there, the digit in the uh, the starting lineup. It's number 41, Keenan Fullwood on the bump with a 3.00 earned run average for Eastern Mennonite. 24 innings pitched. And Fullwood is in there for a strike. Brandon Garcia leads it off for Lynchburg. He hit second in the previous game, but Garcia has let off some this season. Pulls that one foul. Keenan Fullwood, one and one on the year. Eight appearances, four starts, including this one here against Lynchburg. One, two, the count now. Nobody gone in the bottom of the first inning. Game two today at Fox Field. Sunshine, blue skies. Garcia swings on this and lifts it into right field. Should be pretty comfortable out there. It is out number one for Lynchburg. And Eric Hyatt now batting. It was a three for four day for Eric Hyatt. Had two walks in there as well against Christopher Newport. And this was a guy, Eric Hyatt, who coming in to that day on Wednesday, he was making just start number three on Wednesday. How about Hyatt wasting no time blistering one in the left field? So his hot streak continues. It's just his fourth start of the season. But that's one of the great things about Lynchburg and Coach Jones and the rest of his staff. If you're getting it done in practice, if you're, if you're performing there and working hard, they'll give you a shot. And it ends up paying off for the Hornets as a team and Eric Hyatt as a player. That is four hits now in the last two games. He was on base, I believe, his first four times up against Christopher Newport. That's another one that the captains, you probably just got to scratch your head a little bit. You, you look at this guy, Eric Hyatt, he's got two starts on the year. You don't have much data to go on as far as a scouting report and everything you throw up there. He's ripping it all around the diamond. And he did it right here against the Royals from Eastern Mennonite. Pulls one into left field. First hit of the ball game for either team, and it's Avery Neves. Fullwood misses high with that 1-0 delivery, and now it's 2-0 for the man that is currently tied for the all-time runs scored lead. He did that in game one, scored in the bottom of the first inning, hit a triple with two outs, part of a three-run first inning for Lynchburg, they go on to win game one, five to three. 
win number 19 on the season. The win streak is up to six in a row. Eight and one now in ODAC play. Oh, Avery Neves is going to wear that one in the back and go to first base with the hit by pitch. So two on for Ben Jones. Ben Jones was on once with an error via the error from the second baseman in game one, but 0 for 4, unfortunately, for Ben Jones, and he would like to break that 0 for streak rather quickly. Been hot up to that point. Lynchburg, 8-1 and one in conference play. A lot of other action this weekend in the ODAC Conference. Roanoke at Washington and Lee. Guilford in Farmville taking on Hampton Sydney. Avert is at Randolph Macon. Virginia Wesleyan at Shenandoah in Bridgewater at Ferrum today. Lynchburg at home. That one got behind Ben Jones. Really, uh, almost you could argue that it maybe hit Ben Jones. He obviously wants to stay in there and hit, and I don't think EMU is going to argue because they don't want another runner on, but the runners do move up. Two in scoring position now for Ben Jones with a 1-0 count, and that's back-to-back -back pitches that have gotten away from Fullwood. Can't really leave you with a lot of confidence if you're the Royals. Corners are in. Middle is slightly in, kind of double play depth concept, and that one did hit Ben Jones. So we wondered if the last one plunked him or not, but this one does. Back-to-back -back hit batters, and the bases are loaded now. Bases are loaded for Sean Pokerot. So Keenan Fullwood, some early struggles, and there's a good time to make a mound visit there if you're the catcher. Keenan Fullwood is a freshman from Stafford, Virginia, North Stafford High School. This is start number four on the season for Keenan Fullwood. And probably an uneasy feeling in the EMU dugout, although in saying that, the Royals surrendered three runs in the first inning of the first game and really settled down nicely thereafter. So just because a team has a big inning early, it doesn't necessarily equate to disaster. You can hang around in the game like EMU did in game one. 0-1 the count here on Poker Rock. It looks like Fullwood maybe has found the control again. Avery Neves leading off second base. Eric Hyatt is at third. He got on with a single, and it was back-to-back -back hit by pitch. Hit batters, Neves and Jones. 0-2 here with one out. Swing and miss from Sean Pokerock. So now, just like that, there's two gone. And Keenan Fullwood may be pitching around the danger here. He'll have to face... The always ready Gavin Collins tripled in the first inning of game one. Gavin Collins is kind of that guy who seems to just get a hit every game. Most hitters don't just get one hit every game, go one for three and bat 333 on the season. They usually have a hot game where you pound out two or three or four hits, then you take a couple offers, but Gavin Collins is about as consistent as you can get. He's got over 120 career hits. He's closing on, closing in on 100 career RBI. Only a junior. Collins ready to drive in more here. He'll float that one foul behind the backstop. 1-1 one, one count with two away. Wind now appears to be blowing out to right center. It was blowing in earlier in the day. So maybe we'll call it a swirling wind here. Temperatures up to about 60 degrees. And there is a lot of sunshine now. Had some clouds early, but they look to be gone. Swing and miss from Gavin Collins. That one in the dirt. One, two, the count. Big pitch coming right here for Keenan Fullwood. Feel like that Royal dugout's going to explode if he can get out of this one with no runs. They're on their feet right now, rooting him on. Fullwood deals. Swing and a miss from Collins. Yeah, he's pumped up. Why wouldn't he be? Big pitch right there. Back-to-back -back Ks to leave the bases loaded. And we'll go to the top of the second inning. Still no score here at Fox Field on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.
The designated hitter, Natty Solomon, is up now for Eastern Mennonite. He drove in two in game one, two of the three runs. It was a hard line drive, single to right center field for Natty Solomon. He's driven in a bunch this season, 24 total, homered four times, eight doubles in there for Natty Solomon from Harrisonburg, Virginia, 6-3, senior, DHing in this second game today and facing and getting his first look at Wesley Arrington. Two-oh the count. Nobody away here in the top of the second. Eastern Mennonite looking to break a six-game losing skid now. Last win was that conference victory against Virginia Wesley. EMU was 12 and 24 last year. They did win seven conference games last year. Again, not an afterthought. They play everybody tough as Arrington comes across with a fastball for a strike. Uh, back in 2021, it was that first round upset of Randolph-Macon in the ODAC tournament that caught some eyeballs and some attention. Nine and 15 in the regular season. Lost some games due to COVID there as Solomon will fly out to Logan Webster in right field for the first out. Last winning season was 2020 when everybody did get shut down. They were 11 and eight before the shutdown. Last full winning season for EMU, you have to go all the way back to 2014. 2014, the last full winning season for Eastern Mennonite, 20 and 19 that year. Bunt shown, bunt attempted by the shortstop Spraker and they will call it a strike. Love that arm action from Wesley Arrington. It's a little bit little bit shorter than most of the other pitchers for Lynchburg. Kind of gets it out, and it's a nice tight arm circle. You're going to get a good look at it there. Yeah, it never really gets below the belt. A lot of starters or pitchers in general. Ball's going to come out of the glove, hand on top, and then go down that right arm with the ball, and it will go by the right hip, and then you get into that arm circle. But Arrington... Keeps it nice and tight, almost an infield, not quite the short arm from a catcher, but pretty tight there. Arrington gets good velocity on that, 2-2 two, two the count now with one out to Ethan Spraker. Just love watching these different guys work, though. Different ways to do it, always something unique. As Wesley Arrington, also, also in the running, if not already the winner of the best hair on the team award, best lettuce up there. I mean, he's got full flow going there as Poker Rock briefly bobbled that, but able to throw down the first for strikeout victim number one of the game for Arrington, out number two of the inning. Yeah, I don't know if that's just all natural or if some work goes into that for Wesley Arrington, but it's a great look for sure. And he's a big guy. He's got the he's 6'2", 6'3", got the long wingspan. He walks by you, and you, didn't, you don't know if there's like a modeling convention in town or something. Very impressive. And he wears the, the stirrups out there, too, which I think all the old school baseball fans love, right? The stirrups with the three stripe, the red. It's a fabulous look for Wesley Arrington. I'm sure he's more concerned about results rather than looks, but it's something fun to talk about as he misses wide with the fastball. 1-1 one, one the count on Eric Wilkinson. Did not play in game one. Left-handed hitter in the lineup here for Eastern Mennonite. Eric Wilkinson, Fairfax, Virginia native. Another freshman. Fairly young roster for Mennonite. I feel like we've said another freshman multiple times. We'll run that down for you as Arrington kind of slipped on the plant there. They do repair the mound in between games during a doubleheader. Do some work on that. But sometimes that, that new clay they put in there and tamp down doesn't quite settle. That can be something for a pitcher that really is worth talking about. The footwork up there. Sometimes you got to pitch out of a hole at the rubber. Pitchers are used to doing that, and you can move around to the side. You can, you can find a way to make that work usually. What's worse for a pitcher is landing in a hole. If you talk to most pitchers, they'll say that, of the two, they'd rather pitch out of a hole or around a hole 
But landing in a hole is so tough because you're, you're just used to landing with that lead leg in the same spot. So if you don't have a good landing point there, that can be a difficult adjustment to make. You have to find a way to get around that. Most, most guys have a side they prefer to pitch from. If you look at a lot of the Lynchburg pitchers, I think the right-handers tend to throw more towards the first base side of the rubber. But again, you can move around and adjust. Landing in a hole, that becomes really difficult. Strikeout number two so far here for Wesley Arrington. Back-to-back -back case. He's fired up and will head to the bottom of the second after another three-up, three-down inning for Eastern Mennonite. Seven, eight, nine, do up for Lynchburg. Love the graphic there from the LHSN team. We're glad you are part of the team. Riley O'Donovan up to hit now for Lynchburg. Number 19, 255 on the season. He's driven in 19. He's got five doubles and two home runs. Power is there for Riley O'Donovan. Drove in a couple against Christopher Newport on Wednesday. Always have fun watching Riley O'Donovan. I was calling him a hard ball earlier in the season. He hits it hard. He throws it hard, plays the game that way. He's a weight room warrior kind of a guy as well. He can throw around the, the steel up there in Wake Fieldhouse for sure. Swings and misses at that offering from Keenan Fullwood, who gave up a single in the bottom of the first, hit a couple batters, but struck out two with the bases loaded to end the threat. Keenan Fullwood. O'Donovan will swing on this. It's into right field. Sun was a bit of an issue earlier, but that one handled with relative ease. And it's in the books as an F9 to bring up Logan Webster. Logan Webster, sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia, 257 on the season. He's got 19 hits, and he's driven in 14 himself. Webster's moved around batting order a little bit when he's been in there. He's hit second some, he's hit fourth some, now in the eight hole in front of Carson Atkins, who has become one of Lynchburg's most dangerous threats here. Nine hole hitter, definitely not an afterthought for the Hornets. Neither is the eight hole man, Logan Webster. You'll watch the breaking ball come in high and inside from Keenan Fullwood, one one the count. We're back in action again Tuesday. Lynchburg will host North Carolina Wesleyan. 3 p.m. first pitch on Tuesday, question mark. Yes, it's being confirmed. 3 p.m. first pitch scheduled. Another reason, though, to make sure you sign up for those text and email updates because sometimes game times will get changed. A, a school might be a little late getting here. Or you can't get the bus in time, that kind of stuff. and Or... The other factor could be weather. You might start a game earlier. So it's a good reason to stay plugged in and connected with all of our social media stuff and to sign up for those text and email alerts that are at the bottom of every recap, the link. But continuing the thought with a full count here on Logan Webster. Check swing. Did he go? He did not, and it's ball four. First walk of the game surrendered by Keenan Fullwood. Continuing the thought, though, for the schedule. It will be a home game for Lynchburg Tuesday, April 4th, hosting 
North Carolina Wesleyan. Then the Hornets hit the road for a big conference matchup against Randolph-Macon Wednesday, the 5th of April. Fans Eastern Mennonite will host CNU on Tuesday. So that'll be a big one for them. We've talked about the captains quite a bit. That was Lynchburg's opponent on Wednesday. So we get another hit batter. This time it's Carson Atkins plunked in the back. Third hit batsman of the game for Keenan Fullwood. Brandon Garcia, the leadoff hitter, is up again in the bottom of the second inning. 0 for 1 so far, flew out to the right fielder. Game one, Brandon Garcia had two hits. Multiple hits for Brandon Garcia in four of his last five starts. The other three games in that sequence date back to early March. But I think it makes the case that Brandon Garcia is such a threat anytime he gets in the lineup. Hopefully he's healthy for good now. Re-aggravated a leg injury in early March. Doesn't get all of this, but it might be perfect placement. It is. It's down in left field for Garcia. Webster around third base. No play at the plate, and that's an RBI bloop single for Brandon Garcia. Hornets are on the board now with the 1-0 lead. Eric Hyatt up again. A little bit of frustration you could see from Garcia as he was walking back to first base, giving the gear to Gabe Garcia, the assistant coach, one of the assistant coaches here at Lynchburg. No relation between those Garcias, but, of course, the two Garcia coaches are brothers, Oscar and Gabe. Steal attempt here. Carson Atkins running, and he's safe. High throw. Stolen base for Atkins. It was one where a perfect throw. EMU may have had a shot to get Carson Atkins there at third. But the throw pulled Nick Arnold in the sky a little bit. Had to yank that one down to keep it from going into left field and did apply the tag, but it was too late. Two in scoring position for Eric Hyatt. One for one so far today. He was three for four against Christopher Newport on Wednesday. Did not play in game one. Corners are in for EMU. Middle is basically regular depth for the Royals. Hyatt swings and misses at that one. Good cut there. Appeared to be on it. Love seeing that. Not all swings and misses are created equal. And coaches will... Take note of that. That one from Eric Hyatt looked like he was right there. Another one, breaking ball, seems to be on it. And it's and it's great balance, great tempo, all those things coaches will talk about as a great hitting approach. Eric Hyatt, kind of that short, compact swing, doesn't make a big move with the ball. One, two count. He'll get a piece of that. Could be a tough play. Bermuda Triangle type of ball that will fall in. Atkins will sprint from third base and score. He was tagging there, but the way the ball hit in between that trio of defenders for EMU, they were unable to pick it up in time and make a play on Carson Atkins. And Brandon Garcia moves up as well. That's a bloop single for Eric Hyatt. Runners at the corners for Avery Neves. One out. All-American at the plate. Just going back to Eric Hyatt's hitting approach, I would argue he might get a few more bloop singles because of that kind of compact, no wasted movement kind of approach. May not have quite as much power. Oh, watch out for power, though. Neves, sky high. Left fielder has a beat on it. It will stay in the yard, but it's going to be a very high and very long sacrifice fly for Avery Neves. Add another RBI to his total. Brandon Garcia comes in. And now it's a 3-0 Lynchburg lead. For Avery Neves, that's RBI number 30 on the season. He has driven in 30. He is second all-time in that category here at the University of Lynchburg. He needs 188 RBIs to tie Steven Scott. 
He's got, at the moment, Avery Neves has driven in 164, according to my count. So 14 more, and that'll be another record that he's tied for, and then 15 more, and he'll pass and end up being the career leader in something else here at Lynchburg. He has literally and figuratively rewritten the record book here for the Hornets, or forced, forced the uh, sports information staff to rewrite the record book as they take phone calls uh, during the game with two outs here. Three, three runs have come in for Lynchburg in this second inning. Throw over to keep an eye on Eric Hyatt, who's two for two in the game. That means Eric Hyatt now, fans, is five for his last six. There's a couple walks in there as well. The game is young, too. Eric Hyatt has a chance to do more damage and add to those stats. Coming into the game, Eric Hyatt was only hitting 286. He had four hits and 14 at bats. But, man, this last week has been one to remember for Eric Hyatt. Ball four on Ben Jones. Ben Jones, a little bit of a frustrating start to game two. He's been hit and now walked. Didn't really get a pitch to offer at in that at bat. Sean Pokorok struck out in his first at bat. He was one of those two strikeout victims with bases loaded. We were raving about Keenan Fullwood pitching with one foot in the frying pan and the other in the pressure cooker there in the first inning. But we may have seen all from Keenan Fullwood here in the second inning. He did great to get out of danger in the first and get out, get out scoreless. But now EMU surrendered three. The entire infield is in there for the conversation. Two outs in the bottom of the third. Lynchburg scored three in the bottom of the first inning in game one. And the big inning explosion has happened here in inning two. Lynchburg has sent seven to the plate thus far. Six in a row have reached. Riley O'Donovan, the only out. He flew out to right field to begin the inning. Then it was a walk from Logan Webster. Carson Atkins hit by a pitch. Brandon Garcia, an RBI single. Atkins stole first or stole third in there at one point. Eric Hyatt had a single. Sack fly from Avery Neves and then walk from Ben Jones. So it hasn't been six in a row that have reached. He had the sack fly in there from Avery Neves. And now an outfield opportunity into center will be out number three of the inning. But it was a good one for Lynchburg. They score th three, two hits, leave two stranded, no EMU errors, and the Hornets take the lead as we go to the top of the third. Third inning about to get underway here from Fox Field. Wesley Arrington back out for more. I said he was 6'2 or 6'3. Wesley Arrington is 6'4 from Keswick, Virginia, outside Charlottesville. Wesley Arrington, a senior. You look at the career numbers for Arrington, 6-3 in the career. He's approaching 100 career innings pitched. Uh, this will be start number 21 in the career for Wesley Arrington. Started eight games back in 21, eight last year, and this is start number five this season. 
K per nine this year is closing in on 10, which is a great stat that maybe could be talked about more. How about this grab over there by Eric Hyatt? Doing it with the metal and the leather. Eric Hyatt, a sliding grab to get out number one. To bring up Alex Galuciano. The junior for Eastern Mennonite. But yeah, Wesley Arrington, the K per nine is 9.97. Any Anything over 10 is really good. Even anything over nine, pretty good for most pitchers. Just for reference, fans, Lynchburg, Jack Batchmore leading in K per nine. That's 11.79. Nick Matfield next. Wesley Arrington is third on that list. Keenan Fullwood, the starter for Eastern Mennonite, is second on their team in Ks per nine at 9.38. Foul ball there for strike two. One, two, the count with one out. As we continue to rave about Wesley Arrington and the great things he's done on the mound this season in his career and today. Two strikeouts for Arrington. Give him a third. Swing and a miss at what looked like an off-speed pitch there. Galuciano is down on strikes. And now it's a freshman, Dylan Hall. Dylan Hall is one of three freshmen in the lineup this game for Eastern Mennonite. A sophomore out there as well. And just one senior, Natty Solomon, the only senior in the starting nine this time around for Eastern Mennonite. So I mentioned their youth movement. A lot to like about the future. The record is not so great right now for the Royals at 5-19. and 19. But, but I think there's some reasons to be hopeful for Eastern Mennonite fans. 1-0 the count. As Arrington set for more, that one ran up and in on Dylan Hall. And that's a hit by pitch. Now batting center fielder number five, Logan Mason. Logan Mason will put himself in the batter's box again for the second time today. 6-3 in his first at bat. And it's the first base runner of the game that Wesley Arrington has allowed. Top of the order. Back, though, in the top of the third. There is two outs. Mason will try to bunt. Arrington with some time. Throw pulled Hyatt into foul territory. But he held on for the out. So a couple snazzy plays by Eric Hyatt. Preserves the shutout for Lynchburg. One left on to end the top of the third. Lynchburg leading Eastern Mennonite 3-0. Number 15, Gavin Collins to lead it off for Lynchburg. Six, seven, eight, due up. Collins, O'Donovan, and Webster. Gavin Collins struck out in his first at bat. Collins with two hits in game one. There was a triple in there as well. I said he was Mr. Consistency, just getting one hit every game, but he did have two hits in game one, and he's actually got three multi-hit games in his last four. So there you go. Gavin Collins on the season. It's going to be six multi-hit games for Gavin Collins. And he has hit safely in. He's hit safely 
in 18 of 22 now. How impressive is that for Gavin Collins? That's the consistency right there. Base hits in 18 of 22 games. And he reached base in a couple of those games where he was held hitless. Good stuff from Gavin Collins all the way around this season. He's played a good glove as well. Some errors, he's playing the left side. You're playing third base and shortstop. Those spots are typically going to have more errors. And guess what? Gavin Collins has got another base hit. Waited on a breaking ball and then punched it into left field. So Gavin Collins now, that should be 19 of 25 that he has hit safely in this season. Mr. Consistency himself, a former ODAC Rookie of the Year, Gavin Collins, hitting the off-speed pitch hard. Riley O'Donovan is 0 for 1 today. They'll try to change that with Gavin Collins leading off at first base. Full wood with the long hold, ball in the dirt. Collins not able to advance. That was a talking point for us in game one, especially towards the end there, that dirt ball read. The teams will practice. It's a, it's a bit of an art to it. And it's a make or break kind of a play. It's a way to advance without having to try to steal a base. You can put some pressure on the defense too. Fullwood will throw over. Eric Wilkinson, a freshman, had to make a move to keep that ball from going into foul territory. 1-0 count on Riley O'Donovan, junior from Reston, Virginia. Long hold there from Fullwood, and it's another hit batter. Third of the game. A big part of Lynchburg's offense. I think we've mentioned it in every broadcast thus, thus far, fans. Lynchburg, they are not afraid to wear it. If you're going to throw one in the batter's box, they're not going to jump out of the way. And Riley O'Donovan takes the hit by pitch right there. Third of the game. I think the number's up to 37 now in the season. We'll double check it here when we get a moment. Logan Webster walked in his first at bat. Up now with runners on first and second and nobody out. Carson Atkins swinging a very hot bat behind Webster. Would not be shocked to see a sacrifice bunt right here. Eastern Mennonite probably Having the same discussion, you probably got a bunt play on right here if you're EMU. First baseman's in front of O'Donovan. Third baseman creeping up on the grass area as well. There you go. Webster shows the bunt, takes a ball in the dirt. 1-0 the count. And the options increase now for Coach Lucas Jones as you see EMU's bunt coverage and the rotation there. Looked like the first baseman was crashing. Second base was going to cover first. Not that EMU can't change that. Webster will swing away on that one and take ball two. 2-0 two the count. Now with the hitter's count, coach might be more apt to just turn you loose. Green light here for Logan Webster. We'll see. Runner at second base is Gavin Collins, number 15. Shortstop creeping behind Collins. You could just see the glove in your screen there. Webster does look like he wants to hit, and he may not have to hit as it's another ball that really wasn't competitive out of the hand from Keenan Fullwood. 3-0 the count. Keenan Fullwood has hit four in the game. Just double checking the records. He has hit four in the game. Walk two. There, uh, there's a strike. That was a breaking ball. 3-0 breaking ball. Maybe that's what Fullwood can throw for a strike right now. Wouldn't be shocked to see him go back to it. Neves got hit, Ben Jones got hit, Carson Atkins got hit, Riley O'Donovan, the most recent one. It was a curveball. Webster floats it into left. Left fielder comes on and makes the grab. Out number one, runner still at first and second for Carson Atkins. And if you're a good hitter like Carson Atkins, a veteran, you don't need anyone to tell you like the coach Say, hey, he's having trouble throwing the fastball for a strike. He might go to his breaking ball. You've probably already observed that in the on-deck circle. See if Fullwood goes to it here. Looked like a fastball. Atkins was ready for the fastball. Just a swing and a miss. 0-1 the count. 
one out in the bottom of the third. Lynchburg leading 3-0. They scored three runs on two hits in the last inning. Foldwood with a hold, checks Collins at second. Pitch off the plate for ball one. Carson Atkins, 358 on the season, slugging over 600 now. It's been a bunch of doubles and homers in the last two weeks. Sprayed that one off the bat, think he was late. Sends it into the EMU dugout, one, two the count with one out. Atkins on the season, five doubles, four homers. Got some stolen bases in there as well. He stole a bag in this one already. Two strike delivery from Fullwood. Atkins doesn't get all of this off the end of the bat. Mate, might drop in, it does. Collins around third, play at the plate. Relay will not get sent into home and it is a run scored. Bloop single RBI from Carson Atkins. Not what he wanted, but statistically it keeps his hot streak going. I don't know if, if mentally it keeps his hot streak going, but it is a hit, it is an RBI. Collins scores, we've got runners at first and second for Brandon Garcia, who's got an RBI single already. And here comes another visit, and I think Keenan Fullwood's day is done now. We'll catch our breath here and get ready to tell you about a new, a new pitcher for Eastern Mennonite. They trail 4-0 in the bottom of the third inning at Fox Field in Lynchburg. So now Brendan Barrett is in the game to pitch for Eastern Mennonite, and he'll face Brandon Garcia. One for two so far in this game. Two hits in game one for Brandon Garcia, picking right up where he left off, basically, after missing a lot of the month of March with an injury. There's a sweeping breaking ball that is ball one from Brendan Barrett. Left-handed pitcher, you already see part of his game there. Got some real horizontal movement on that breaking ball. There's another one, horizontal and vertical. Barrett's got good action on that breaking ball, but unfortunately, it's a 2-0 count. Might have to attack Brandon Garcia with the fastball now. Runners at first and second for Lynchburg. It's O'Donovan at second, Carson Atkins at first. O'Donovan was hit by a pitch, one of four hit batters.
from Keenan Fullwood. Fullwood surrendered five hits. Didn't really get hit hard. I mean, Eric Hyatt hit a ball hard for a single. Avery Neves had that deep sack fly. That ball was hit well. Gavin Collins ripped one into left. So that's three right there, and I guess you could make the counter argument, well, he got hit hard three times in three innings. That's not so great. A walk here from Brendan Barrett, not so great. As now Brandon Garcia will move to first base, and Eric Hyatt steps in to hit. He has two hits. First one was a rocket, second one was a dink, two for two in the scorebook, and it continues a very hot streak for Eric, Hi Eric Hyatt, three for four on Wednesday against Christopher Newport. One away here in the bottom of the third. 3-0 the lead, 4-0 the lead. 4 nothing lead as Gavin Collins has scored in this inning. Led off the inning with that hard single to left. Hyatt will swing at that one. Another on-balanced hack there. Seems to not be easily fooled by those breaking balls. And Brandon Barrett seems to have that big sweeping curveball that doesn't really fool you. You see it. It's just hard to figure out how much it's going to break and where it's going to end up. There's another one. Strikeout looking. Eric Hyatt goes down. And Avery Neves steps up. Sack fly, RBI, hit by pitch in his first plate appearance. Neves had the triple in game one. That was his only hit, a one for five game for Avery Neves in the first contest today. Two strikes, or excuse me, two outs. There are no strikes. One ball, no strikes to Avery Neves. Two outs in the bottom of the third in a four nothing ball game. Neves kind of pumps at that one, lets it go, four strike one. Bases loaded situation. O'Donovan at third. Got hit. Carson Atkins, RBI single. He's at second. Brandon Garcia took a walk. And he's bouncing off at first base. Good block on a ball in the dirt. 2-1 the count now on Avery Neves. Has driven in one in this game. Upped his career total. Swing and miss, 2-2 two, two the count now on Mr. Neves. Two outs. Avery Neves entered the day, hitting 368, slugging 632. Brendan Barrett set, ready to deal. Whew. Don't know how that one didn't hit Neves. But it, now it's a full count. Look back at the umpire. Think he wants to swing the bat. Maybe he's happy the umpire didn't call it. Full count, two outs, bases loaded. Runners on the move here. Action pitch coming from Barrett. Neves hits it to the shortstop. Could be a tough play at first. Neves is rolling down the line, and it gets by the first baseman. One run already in. Now Carson Atkins will come home. It's a 6-0 lead for Lynchburg. Probably going to go down as an E6 there for the shortstop. Ben Jones, 0 for 0 so far in the game. He's been hit and he's walked, looking to do some more damage and possibly really break the game open here. Tough one for Brendan Barrett. He got one of the all-time best to hit a ground ball. Can't ask for much more than that as a pitching coach, but unfortunately, Eastern Mennonite can't come up with it there at shortstop. They come up with it at shortstop, but can't come up with the throw at first. Runners at the corners. Avery Neves, always a threat to run. 52 stolen bases in his career. 52 for 57 all-time for Avery Neves. And 52 is good for second place on that all-time leaderboard at Lynchburg. Jones will swing, not hit hard, but this is going to be a tough play in left. Grab is made, inning is over. Lynchburg plates three more, three in the second, three in the bottom of the third, and the Hornets lead Eastern Mennonite 6-0.
Aiden Miller is due up for Eastern Mennonite, hitting second in game two. Miller was in the lineup in game one towards the bottom, but now up in the two hole, two, three, four. Nick Arnold due up next. He's over 400 on the season. Natty Solomon, we saw great things from Solomon in game one. Wesley Arrington coming after another hitter. Aiden Miller swings at strike one. Aiden Miller, another freshman in the starting lineup, one of the three. Mm, fastball up and in. Seems to be the miss for Arrington when we've seen him as he hit Dylan Hall with that fastball. Don't know if he's trying to come in. If you're trying to go in and, and you miss there and almost hit a guy, I think it, that's one of those misses that as a pitching coach you can live with a little bit. Maybe you'd even prefer it over just leaving a ball over the middle of the plate. Obviously, you don't want to make a habit out of hitting batters as Arrington will get another swing and miss there. Arrington on the season has actually only hit the one, just the one hit batter that came last inning when he plunked Dylan Hall. 6-0, Lynchburg leads. Mm. Miller just barely got a piece of that breaking ball. Love that from Wesley Arrington. Another guy that can really get some great action on that slider with that shorter arm action. Pumps it in the glove there, breaking ball, swing and a miss. Arrington got him, strikeout number four so far this afternoon for Wesley Arrington. One gone, and we get to see Nick Arnold again. Three hits in game one. He entered the game at 425. So that number only going to improve after that three for four performance in the first one. 0 for, two, 0 for 1 so far against Wesley Arrington today. Arrington misses in the other batter's box with that one. Flew out to left. Nick Arnold is a junior. Slugging percentage is really good too. 675 for Nick Arnold. That's on three homers, 10 doubles, and one triple. 2-0 the count for a guy that can do a lot of damage. Swing in the bat. Oh, second hit batter. Wesley Arrington, that one got away. Nick Arnold in some pain. He'll ditch the bat over to the dugout and walk to first. Second base runner for EMU this game. It's both by getting hit. Natty Solomon. Number 23, the senior from Harrisonburg. Only senior in the lineup in game two. Solomon got the bat off his shoulder there, but that fastball misses outside. 1-0 the count. You could tell a little bit from that. Pitch didn't really look that close from Wesley Arrington, but Solomon still had to check the swing. So that's a good thing for Arrington. Out of the hand, still competitive and getting the attention of Natty Solomon. Mm, nice move there from Wesley Arrington. Good tight spin and throw to keep an eye on Nick Arnold, who is a threat to run. Six stolen bases and six tries this season. Nick Arnold really does everything. We saw a couple great plays from him defensively in game one. There's that tailing two-seam fastball from Wesley Arrington. Strike one. Nick Arnold, a junior from Nansman River High School. Leads off at first. There's another one that in the other batter's box for Wesley Arrington. 2-1 the count. There's one out here in the top of the fourth inning. Lynchburg leading 6-0. They're looking for win number 20 on the season. Swing and a miss there. Solomon couldn't connect with the fastball from Wesley Arrington. Fastball outside corner, bullseye for Arrington, strikeout, victim number five. Ethan Spracker has been one of those five strikeout victims. Cade in his first at bat in the second inning. Wesley Arrington over for a strike. Other than a couple wild misses, Wesley Arrington looks really, really good. He's hit a couple batters, and then there's been a few that have gone out wide left to those right-handers, but now he's 
on Ethan Spracker. Arrington looks like he's got a little bit more spring in his step. 6 nothing the Lynchburg lead. 0-2, two, two outs, away target. Arrington got it there and K'd him again. Six strikeouts here in the game for Wesley Arrington. The inning is over. Lynchburg leads 6-0, heading to the bottom of the fourth. Bottom four set to start here at Fox Field in Lynchburg. It's still Brendan Barrett, the senior lefty on the mound for Eastern Mennonite, Virginia Beach guy, Ocean Lakes High School. He'll face Sean Pokerock doing the catching duties in game two for Lynchburg. Pokerock is 0 for 2 so far. And there's another hit batter. Another hit batter, as you saw Pokerock there. No signs of move, moving the left leg out of the way, just wears it. He's on board with the hit by pitch. Hit batter at number five in the game for Lynchburg. Such a big part of their game, and as long as they continue to get hit, we'll continue to talk about that. Read an interesting thing in the Billy Martin biography, one of Billy Martin's biographies. If you don't know who Billy Martin is, one of the all-time great major league managers, and he was the guy that kind of became the butt of the joke as George Steinbrenner would hire him and refire him to, to coach the Yankees. And uh, I think it was like four separate stints coaching the Yankees for Billy Martin. But Billy Martin, one of the all-time great baseball minds, he would actually have the players in spring training do a drill where they would try to get hit by pitches. And he invented some sort of a old school rudimentary elbow guard that he would put on and he would make uh, make him wrap the front arm up in a towel and then they'd put the winter jacket on and this was in spring training down in Florida and then Billy Martin would throw you curveballs and you just get hit by him and that was part of the drill that he would do so it's not totally unheard of as Gavin Collins scorches one to the third baseman throws across out there for the first one of the inning but it's not totally uncommon for a team to have that as part of their offensive game plan to work on getting hit. And it's probably a good drill for a younger hitter who jumps out of the way from a curveball. A lot of times you see same arm side, that would be right-handed pitcher throwing to a right-handed hitter. They'll jump out of the way on that curveball that starts at the, the head or the shoulder or the elbow. So maybe not a terrible thing if you had a younger hitter that was diving out of the way as o Riley O'Donovan will not dive out of the way. Another hit by pitch. Second in a row for O'Donovan. Six in the game now. And Lynchburg's been plunked. But if you have one of those hitters that isn't confident staying in there on the curveball and jumping out of the way, maybe not a bad idea to try to run that old school Billy Martin drill. And you could get armored up with all the new school gear. Honestly, you could do something crazy like, you know, put the catcher's chest protector on the, on the side of your body. You could spin it around on the side of the body and maybe even put the leg guard there as well. You could really have some fun with it. The key would be to not hurt your own players in the process. You don't want to do a drill where you're working on getting hit by a pitch and break an elbow. That would be pretty silly. But right now, Lynchburg 
He seemed to be wearing these pitches without too much lasting damage. Maybe some bumps and bruises, but not much more than that. A lot of base runners, and guess what? We have another one. We'll continue the conversation about getting hit by a pitch because it's the third of the inning and now seven in the game for Eastern Mennonite. That's between two pitchers. We may be seeing a third pitcher here in just a moment. Bases will be loaded for Lynchburg. All three runners on have been hit by a pitch. Not something you see a whole lot of, and it looks like Coach Adam Posey has seen enough. We'll get a new arm coming up here in just a minute. Lynchburg leads 6-0, looking for more here in the bottom of the fourth inning from Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. Here comes number 35, Carson Jennings, out of the bullpen for the Royals. Thomas Dale High School, 6'4". He is a senior. This will be appearance number 10 of the season, 17 innings of work. He has struck out 10. He's 0-1 record-wise. 15 appearances last year for Eastern uh, Mennonite, pitched 28 innings. And I think you could get a look on your screen already and get an appreciation of the 6-4 frame from Carson Jennings. Got kind of an interesting arm action. We talked about Wesley Arrington. The short arm action doesn't bring it below the belt. Carson Jennings, the exact opposite. Watch how he takes this ball out of the glove and kind of freezes it right there. Atkins swinging on the first pitch. Left fielder going back. Did Carson Atkins get another one? It is gone. Grand slam time for Carson Atkins. Fifth home run in the last three weeks. Nobody swinging a hotter bat than Carson Atkins. Give him four RBI here, too, with one swing of the bat. Doesn't need to get a look at the new pitcher. Doesn't need to time him up. Just turn him loose and let him go. Carson Atkins sends one over the left field wall. He's now two for two in the game. He's driven in five now. He had a double in game one, and this hot streak continues. Brandon Garcia wanted to base hit bunt, and then as the ball was coming into his body, it was almost a self-defense play to get the bat on the ball. 1-3 on the put out there for out number two of the inning. The three hitters got on from the hit by pitch. Carson Atkins drove them in. A lot of times you want to get a read on a pitcher out of the bullpen, uh-uh, not necessary for Carson Atkins. Just let me get up there and swing the bat, and he parks it. My goodness. After game one in the last week, last eight days, Carson Atkins was 11 for 18. He's two for two in this one. So make it 13 for his last 20 for Carson Atkins. There are four doubles in there and three home runs. And I think he's driven in 11 in his last five games now. Don't quote me on that stat. 0-2 the count now on Eric Hyatt. 
Eric Hyatt's two for three in the game so far today. He's got a hot streak going, dating back to the game against CNU. But Carson Atkins, man, how good was that, fans? First pitch from the new arm. Hyatt will bounce this one up the middle. Tough play on the move by the shortstop. Wow, good stuff there to get out of the inning. Throwing across the body, across the diamond for the final out of the inning. Damage done for Lynchburg. They're on top double digits now. 10-0 the Hornet lead as we go to top of the fifth. Wesley Arrington back out for the University of Lynchburg Hornets. You're always thinking about bullpens and how you're going to manage it in these games, in these months and weeks where you have so many back-to-back -back games. Oh, watch out. Wesley Arrington took a shot up the middle. Ben Jones going to range to try to keep it going. Yeah, what a play there by Ben Jones. Partially deflected by Arrington. Kind of rattled the cage just a little bit, but Ben Jones on the backhand throws. And a nice play at first by Eric Hyatt. Out is recorded. Golisano up now. It's Dwyer, Jason Dwyer in the game. I'm sorry, he started the game, the sophomore, and popped out to the, thir to the first baseman in his first at bat. So we're all out of sorts up here, but we've got it right. It's the catcher, Jason Dwyer. He is a sophomore. He has faced Wesley Arrington once already. Arrington comes at him, 0-2 the count. It was such a great play from Ben Jones that we thought maybe it was worth two outs. It was an extra style point there for Ben Jones to range over to the backhand side. Strike out here. Dwyer is down quickly. And it is K victim. Number six for Wesley Arrington. He struck out four of the last six. Alex Golisano, one of those strikeout victims in his first at bat. The junior will try to get cranked up. He'll swing and miss at that first pitch offering from Wesley Arrington. Arrington inducing a lot of swings and misses. He's been out of the zone a few times. Arrington's hit a couple batters. But, man, what he's got going right now, EMU having a really hard time figuring it out. 0-2 the count. Let's see if Arrington can get strikeout number seven here. Away target, Arrington just missed it. Now we'll talk about how do you pitch off of that. What's the concept? Follow that up. What is that setting up? Maybe you go out there again. Maybe you try to go back inside. Looks like an away target again from Poker Rock, and it is strikeout number seven. Wesley Arrington is on. Ends the inning in the fifth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. Lynchburg leads 10-0 at Fox Field.
Here comes number 30, Avery Neves. He'll lead off the inning for Lynchburg in the bottom of the fifth. Hornets leading 10-0. Three in the second, three in the third, four in the bottom of the fourth. And they were all driven in by Carson Atkins. Grand slam. Three runners got on from the hit by pitch. Atkins pumped one over the left field wall, right over the ODAC championship sign there in left. And so it ends up being four runs on one hit last inning for Lynchburg. None left on. They've left seven on. But again, they've gotten a lot on in this game. Carson Jennings, a 6'4 right-hander, has got an 0-2 count now on Avery Neves. Lead-off man in the bottom of the fifth. Mm, check swing on a breaking ball that missed upstairs. And it is ball one. Avery Neves, one hit in the first game. He has reached base here in this second game, but no hits just yet. A sack fly in game two for Avery Neves. There's a breaking ball that was better from Jennings. He took a long look in there after the long hold from the catcher, Jason Dwyer. 2-2 Two -two the count, though, just a ball. Outfield's pretty much straight up, medium depth on Avery Neves. Swing and a miss, down on strikes and it is out number one of the inning. Ben Jones, 0 for 1, three plate appearances, but 0 for 1, a walk and a hit batter in there. One of seven Lynchburg hit batsmen today, or this game rather. Riley O'Donovan has been hit twice. Neves hit once, Jones hit once, Poker Rock hit once, O'Donovan twice, Webster's been hit, and Carson Atkins has been hit. There's been a lot of them, and they've been pretty well spread out for Lynchburg as far as the hit batters go. 0-1 oh, the count here on Ben Jones, who's got as much power as anybody on the team. That includes Carson Atkins and Avery Neves. Atkins now with five home runs on the season. Avery Neves has hit five dingers. And Ben Jones has hit four, and Jones has done it in about half the at-bats, maybe less than half the at-bats, actually. Jones has to take evasive action upstairs on that one. The ball skips off the catcher's glove. One to the count with one out here in the bottom of the fifth. Ben Jones hitting 33 at-bats for Ben Jones. Did he get enough of this one? Sends it high into right field. Wind is blowing out that direction. Right fielder is back. And he makes the grab at the track. So there's another long, loud out for Ben Jones. Another one he probably just missed. Not quite enough there on the fly out. We should check Ben Jones's fly out to ground out numbers because more often than not, he gets the ball elevated, gets it into the outfield, making one of those three deep defenders make a play on him. Two gone in the bottom of the fifth. Good pitch that just missed inside there from Jennings. You can tell he's got good stuff in that delivery. He takes it out of the glove, and there's kind of a pause there at the right thigh as he throws it. Kind of funky. Here's a ball hit well to the right side, but the right fielder will make another grab, and the inning is over. Three up, three down for the first time this game for Lynchburg. They do lead 10-0 as we head to the top of the sixth inning.
top six here at Fox Field. And it's Wesley Arrington wheeling and dealing out there on the mound. Arrington went five strong against Hampton Sydney on Tuesday. Surrendered just one earned run, three hits in that game, struck out six, walked none. Very, very quality start from Wesley Arrington. That's that's two varies in front of it. That's how quality it was. That was his, uh, this ties his longest outing of the year. He went five innings against Pfeiffer back on March 14th. He's gone four innings a couple times. Wesley Arrington has made a few appearances out of the bullpen. And he has an 0-1 count here on the nine-hole man, Dylan Hall. Dylan Hall got hit by a pitch. La uh, his last at bat. Arrington has hit two in this game. But Wesley Arrington's got it all going right now. How about that paint right there? Outer black. That is a thin black line that surrounds the home plate fans. If you talk, hear pitchers talking about pitching on the black, living on the black, painting the black, that's where the reference comes from. Wants to go there again. There's a breaking ball that skipped in. Dylan Hall did not offer it that one. 2-2 two, two the count. Nobody out. Arrington has struck out seven. That one fouled sharply to the right side. And we'll redo it here with a 2-2 two, two count. Dylan Hall, one of those three freshmen in the starting lineup here in game two. Umpire's going to give Sean Pokerock time to adjust the shin guard there. Logan Webster had to get that foul ball that actually caromed out into play as well. But now we're set and ready to go. Arrington will look in from the sign. Another guy all from the stretch. See that a lot more now. Some pitchers not even bothering with a windup. This one will stay in play. Logan Webster comes on to make the grab for out number one. Top of the lineup is back. It's Logan Mason, the junior, 0 for 2 in the game so far in this one. Mason did have three hits in game one. The stretch, the set position, what you would go to as a pitcher with runners on base. And you see a lot more pitchers use it with no runners on base. Here's one floated into center. Atkins coming on to make the grab on the move. Fabulous read there from Carson Atkins. So good with that first step. He is rarely fooled. He's always pointed in the right direction. And then the speed takes over from there to just hunt that ball down in the right center gap. Second baseman, number 10, Aiden Miller. Two gone in the top of the sixth. Aiden Miller, 0 for 2 with a strikeout. You see first pitch swinging again from Eastern Mennonite. They know Wesley Arrington's in the zone. He has walked none. He has hit two, but no walks. And on the year, Arrington, the walk total pretty low. But he's coming right after hitters today. The Royals trying to make an adjustment, swing early in the count. Maybe that means you start throwing more breaking balls first pitch. Throw that fastball just off the plate. And Arrington, hopefully, if you can keep a lot of pitches at the knees, you don't get hurt there. It is a 2-1 count. He's falling behind some hitters, but seems to always find a way to rally back and get back in the at-bat. Wesley Arrington coming into the game, 21 and two-thirds innings, and he only walked seven in there. So it's basically a walk every three innings for Wesley Arrington at that rate. 3-1 the count, though. Opportunity here for another freshman, Aiden Miller, as Arrington deals that one. It will be a ball, first walk of the game. Maybe I jinxed him, who knows. Two outs in the top of the sixth. You have to face a very good hitter in Nick Arnold, 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch. Nick Arnold was 3 for 4 in the first game. And still over 400 on the season for Nick Arnold. There's that breaking ball. Arnold, you can see him just kind of bail out of the swing as it's coming in. 0-1 oh, oh the count with two outs. Oh, buzzing the tower there. Arnold was hit in his last at bat. He's got a smile on his face as 
He'll dust himself off and get ready for a 1-1 offering from Wesley Arrington. It's another one that Arrington's not trying to go that far inside. This one will skip. Poker Rock tried to backhand it, keep it off the back wall here, but unable to do so. And now it's a 2-1 count. That's one that just got away from Wesley Arrington. That previous pitch, and really you could say the same thing about the last one that bounced in there. That's probably an overcorrection, right? You, you, you come high and tight on the previous pitch. You don't want to do that again. So you kind of hold on to the next one a little bit longer and choke it. It ends up skipping in. There's a better one, breaking ball. That just missed. Looked to be right down the middle, but maybe low. You see Poker Rock with a little word to the umpire there, maybe just asking how low was it? Did it just miss? That kind of thing. 3-1 the count on Nick Arnold. Arnold will swing. Another ball into center field. Atkins is on the move. He's not going to get to that one, and it's the first hit of the game for Eastern Mennonite. No hitter is gone. Atkins didn't retrieve it at first try. Then he had to go down and get it again and throw it in. It ends up being a triple for Nick Arnold. Run comes in as well, so call it an RBI triple for Nick Arnold. His second triple of the season. He's now driven in 26. So the no-hitter is gone. It was five and two-third innings of no-hit ball for Wesley Arrington. Sean Pokorok will go out there to have a short conversation, and that's the danger of falling behind, even with the nasty stuff. Back-to-back 3-1 counts for Wes Arrington. You fall behind too much, and those good hitters like Arnold will make you pay. I think Atkins was, was probably playing a little bit more shallow than his normal depth, expecting soft contact again. After all, that's what Wesley Arrington has induced all game has been soft contact. So when Arnold finally drove one over his head, Atkins was, I won't say out of position. He's never out of position, but just unable to reel that hard shot in. Made a great effort for it. And you sense that Carson Atkins knew the situation. He knew there was a zero up there in the hit column for Eastern Mennonite. He wanted to catch that one as much as anybody, but just out of his reach. And a no-hitter will have to wait for another day. Swing and miss there from Wesley Arrington. Shutout is gone, too. That's always kind of a, a double whammy there when you give up the no-hitter and a runner scores. Another swing and a miss. Arrington's got that breaking ball going. I think for the most part, Mennonite just doesn't see it. You just don't see it out of his hand. You don't even recognize that it's that it's a slider. 0-2 the count on Solomon. Another one. How about it? Three in a row. He's down on strikes. No hitter is gone. But Wesley Arrington gets K number nine of the game. Royals do score. It's a 10-1 Lynchburg lead as we send it to the bottom of the sixth inning. Due up for the Lynchburg Hornets in the bottom of the sixth. Gavin Collins, Riley O'Donovan, and Logan Webster. Gavin Collins, oh, one for three so far today. Riley O'Donovan's 0 for one with two hit by pitch. He's due. He's looking to put the bat on the ball at some point. And Logan Webster, also 0 for one with a walk and hit by pitch. Eastern Mennonite has hit seven Lynchburg batters in this game today. Go back to the first game. It was just one hit batter by EMU in the first game. That was Brandon Garcia that wore one in his third plate appearance. At the bottom.
Ball's gotten away from Mennonite pitchers a bit here in game two. 5-3 victory in the first one for Lynchburg. I would argue pretty hard fought. I think you got to give the Royals a lot of credit. Top of their lineup did quite a bit of damage in game one. And Eastern Mennonite offensively, as I said, the numbers are actually pretty good. 288 on the season as a team. They're on base at 368. Both those numbers are under Lynchburg's, but, but they just have some dangerous hitters. I really like what they bring to the plate. Gavin Collins' trip to the plate will be pretty short. He watches four go by and takes his first walk of the game. And here comes the designated hitter, Riley O'Donovan. Collins is on first. Nobody out for the DH, Riley O'Donovan. Talking about some team numbers, let's run down Lynchburg's for you. As a team, they hit 310 on the season. And that's the number that we've commented on that has really just steadily gone up. Lynchburg, through the first 10 games, was batting 276 as a team. Through 16 games, Lynchburg was hitting 302, and now the team average is up to 310. That was through 21 games. That team number doesn't factor in what Lynchburg did in game one. It probably went down slightly because Lynchburg only picked up six hits as a team in game one. But overall, this is an offense that is really coming alive as the weather warms up. Breaking ball missed from Carson Jennings, and it's seven straight balls. Riley O'Donovan, I'm sure he'll take the walk. After all, there's by rule, he's got to go to first base. He can't stay in there if they walk him, but he's going to be a little frustrated that he hasn't had a chance to swing the bat. Yeah, you'll see him trot down there. It is ball four. It's eight balls in a row for Carson Jennings. And we'll keep an eye on the EMU bullpen and dugout to see how long they let Carson Jennings go. And you're getting our answer right here, maybe. And we'll get a visit. And we'll pause and catch our breath here and come up with some more fun things to talk about. Lynchburg having more fun at the moment. 10-1, the advantage over Eastern Mennonite. Bottom six at Fox Field on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. Mound visit done. Carson Jennings stays in there. He'll face Logan Webster. And finally, Jennings gets a strike across. It was eight straight balls. So early indications are that the mound visit helped. There is nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Webster swings on this. Almost a mile high. Ooh, and the catcher held on there, Jason Dwyer. Jennings was coming in to provide support, and sometimes that can actually rattle you as the guy trying to catch that pop-up when you sense your teammate inching closer and closer. But the catcher, Dwyer, does reel that one in for the first out of the inning. Pop-ups are another one that get practiced so much, especially at the high level, and I think more than fans would realize. I think a lot of fans, they take that pop-up for granted but these college teams, especially in the spring wind, the wind we get down here at Fox, yeah, you can bet that they're practicing pop-ups. Here's Carson Atkins, grand slam, last at bat. Let's give him our full attention. He is on a major heater. He'll watch ball one. It's a 1-1 one -one count. Nobody's swinging a better bat right now than Carson Atkins. 10-1, to the Lynchburg lead. Grand slam from Atkins, his last at bat. That was the four runs in the bottom of the fourth inning. And he's back again to do more damage. 2-1 the count now for Carson Atkins. Long look from Jennings. Now he delivers. Atkins will watch that one. Might have been a change up there. Sensed a little speed difference on that pitch from Jennings. 2-2 the count now for Carson Atkins. He's two for two in this game with a single, a grand slam, hit by pitch. He'll foul this one off. 
and get a chance to try it again. So much fun watching Carson Atkins in this stretch. Lynchburg played at Roanoke, went up to that game just to watch it. Atkins parked one there at the minor league stadium in Salem. And he'll just punch this one to right field. It's down for a hit. Atkins will turn. He might be looking for another double. Whoop, has to slam the brakes as the right fielder does throw into second. So Carson Atkins, he'll settle for the single, but it's another RBI. Give him six on the day. Six driven in for Carson Atkins. Two singles and a grand slam. He's also been hit by a pitch, and it looks like Carson Jennings' afternoon is going to be done. Eastern Mennonite will go get a new pitcher. We'll take a break. It's Lynchburg back on top by 10, 11 to 1, the Hornet advantage. Number 17, the sophomore Alec Riles is in the game now for Eastern Mennonite. Sophomore from Chesterfield. He's in the starting lineup hitting-wise in game one. And in game two, we'll see Alec Riles out of the bullpen. This will be appearance number eight. He's actually made five starts. Riles' ERA is just above nine. He has struck out 10 in 19 innings of work. Went seven against Avert last year, and career-wise, it was uh, it was a one for three season in 2022 for Alec Riles. One win, three losses. Pitched 34 innings. The numbers were okay, and the numbers this season, he's 0 for six in the win-loss column. Just 19 and two-thirds innings pitched, and this will be appearance number eight. How about some numbers for Carson Atkins? In the last six games now, he is 14 for 21 with three doubles and three homers. That's a doubleheader a week ago at Washington and Lee. Uh, Tuesday game against Hampton Sydney, Wednesday against Christopher Newport, and then two games today for Carson Atkins. 14 for 21 in the last week for Carson Atkins. Three homers, three doubles. The day is not over. We may see Carson Atkins hit again. I have a feeling he would love to bat again in this one. One gone in the bottom of the sixth. One run has come across. That was Gavin Collins that did score on the Carson Atkins single. Leadoff hitter Brandon Garcia steps up. He's one for three with an RBI single and a walk. Oop. Has to dodge that one as the fastball comes up and in from Alec Riles. Carson Atkins since March 14th has 20 hits and five homers since March 14th. So in basically half a month, a little bit more than half a month, Carson Atkins has 20 base hits and five homers. So three weeks and change or so. You get five homers in three weeks. I mean, add that out in a major league season. It, it's just pretty incredible. 
what Carson Atkins has done on this hot streak that hopefully doesn't stop anytime soon. Lynchburg Tuesday home against North Carolina Wesleyan and then Wednesday on the road for a key conference matchup against Randolph-Macon. Strike at the knees there on Brandon Garcia, who's on a, a pretty good hot streak himself, but we've talked a few times. It's kind of disjointed because Garcia missed some time due to injury, but he's actually got a five-game hit streak going on. Atkins goes, doesn't matter because it's ball four. And Eric Hyatt will step to the plate for at bat number five of the game. Two for four so far. And while we're on the subject of guys swinging a hot bat, mention Eric Hyatt, three for four on Wednesday with two walks against Christopher Newport. Key contributions in the Lynchburg victory over the captains, 14-6. Lynchburg got the dub on Wednesday. And they continue their winning ways in game one this afternoon. Looking to finish up this one in what would be win number seven in a row. Lynchburg is looking for win 20 on the season. Hyatt swings through the breaking ball, 1-1 one, one the count. One out, bases are loaded here at Fox Field. Wind has been somewhat of a factor, but not nearly as much as some other games that we've had at home this season. Hyatt will roll this one to the shortstop. Chance for one or two, but now none. Bobbled there at short by Spraker. It will bring another run in. Lynchburg leads 12 to one. Probably not gonna be an RBI there for Eric Hyatt, just an error, but he is on. And the inning continues, and now it's Avery Neves. Bases loaded, 12-1 game, one out. Mm, Neves has been hit once this game and nearly got hit again. Just one for five in game one, and he's 0 for four in this one. So Neves is ready to bust out again and get another hot streak of his own started. He does have a seven game hitting streak. Would love to see him keep that one going. He's hit safely now in 18 games this season. He's reached base in all but one. Didn't get on in game two against Roanoke. 1-1 one, one the count for Neves. Watches that breaking ball go low and in. And now it's a 2-1 count. Neves has nine multi-hit games this season. He's one of those guys you have to have a lot of things to say when you're talking about Avery Neves throughout the career. Ball three, three one count. Neves is just begging for a good pitch to hit here. It's a case where Neves is pretty disciplined, obviously. He's the career walks leader at Lynchburg. He set the single season walks record last year. He's pretty disciplined, but I could even see him expanding the zone just a little bit for this one. He wants a base hit, three one count, here it comes. Out in front of that one, cue ball to the second baseman, had to handle it, had, had the weird spin on it. Run will come in, ground out for Avery Neves, but Carson Atkins scores. And there's two away in the bottom of the sixth. Ben Jones, 0 for 2 so far today. Jones and Neves were definitely included in the guys that had hot streaks coming into the game. They have cooled slightly. Ball game not over yet. We may see them hit again. It's only the bottom of the sixth inning. And there is no 10 run rule here in ODAC play. So the game will go nine for Eastern Mennonite. Unfortunately, you have to think about how, how are we gonna get out of the game without surrendering even more runs? What pitchers are we gonna go to? I think a lot of times you figure, well, you need to go to some of your best guys to try to stop the bleeding. But as a coach, you don't want to burn them in a game like this that's completely out of reach. So it's a weird situation to where you actually have to leave some of your better arms on the bench sometimes and just hope that the other guys can get the job done. Mennonite's got a bu busy schedule just like Lynchburg does. They will be in action on Tuesday hosting Christopher Newport and then Eastern Mennonite home against Bridgewater on Wednesday. So it's a tough deal 
for Coach Adam Posey, not not one that you envy a coach in those decisions that you have to make. It's a chance, though, to, to find somebody in these blowout games. Maybe you get one of your freshmen, one of your guys that doesn't have a lot of experience. You get them a chance, and they really impress you. They get some key outs. You learn that they can pitch in those tough situations. So it's definitely not throwaway innings. You're still learning about your team as a coach. Swing and a miss there from Ben Jones. He is a strikeout victim, and Riles will get out of the sixth inning. Lynchburg has another multi-run inning. They score three. Hornets on top, 13-1. We go to the seventh inning at Fox Field. Ethan Spracker is up now to face Wes Arrington. Still in the game in the seventh inning. He went five and two-thirds scoreless, or five and two-thirds scoreless and hitless. It was an RBI triple that ended the no-hitter and the shutout all in one there for Wesley Arrington. So what I said was right, but it was not exactly the way I, I meant to say it. Wesley Arrington still working. Still looking good, 0-1 count. That breaking ball is really impressive from Wes Arrington. And we've already said it one time or twice, but it bears repeating even more that so deceptive out of the hand from Wes Arrington. I think hitters have a hard time seeing it. You know he throws it. Guys are coming back to the dugout telling you that, or you've seen in your scouting that he throws that breaking ball. Obviously, everyone at this level is going to have some sort of a breaking ball, you think. So you know it's in there, but I just don't think you identify it. I think out of the hand, it looks like a fastball. You swing through it, or by the time you do see it, the swing has started, and you're done. Sometimes, more often than not. 2-2 Two -two the count. Nobody out here for Wes Arrington and the Lynchburg Hornets. Strike three on the edge. K number 10 for Wes Arrington. He struck out 10 against Pfeiffer a couple weeks ago. That was in five innings of work. But Wesley Arrington pitching into the seventh. He's got 10 Ks in this outing. Outstanding from Arrington. Give him some more. Saves the bullpen for Lynchburg as well. They just used two pitchers in game one. Here's our new second baseman with an opportunity. Bouncing ball fielded by Ty Gravitt. He throws to first for the out. Yeah, we had a, a hitter walk up to get the bat, but he is not the batter that's coming up. It will be a substitute. And it looks like number 43, Trevor Self. One hit in 10 at bats so far this season. Talked about finding someone pitching-wise for Eastern Mennonite. You could find a hitter like this as well. Give a guy a bat, a young, a young guy maybe, maybe not even a young guy, just somebody, and at bat, find out what they can do. Could be a way to jumpstart somebody's season. Lynchburg's had a few players like that. Ben Jones comes to mind. Came in to pinch hit in that Bridgewater game and got a single. That was a tie ball game. Lynchburg ended up winning it. 
walk-off fashion. Josh Jorman with the game-winning single, but Ben Jones was a big part of it. Came in the game late. How about a big strikeout again? Another one down for Wes Harrington. 11 Ks. The inning is over. Bottom seven coming up on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. Lynchburg in charge here in game two of the doubleheader against Eastern Mennonite. Hornets on top, 13 to one. 11 strikeouts from Wesley Arrington. Season high, I think it's a career high for Wes Arrington. He looks great out there. He has hit two and walked one, giving up one base hit. That was the triple from Nick Arnold that ended the no-hitter and ended the shutout. But for the most part, it has been absolutely A-plus stuff from Wes Arrington. He got a big ovation from the teammates as he walked in. I, I hope that big ovation doesn't mean he's done selfishly. I want to see more from Wes Arrington. Lynchburg has had some arms warming up in the bullpen. So Wes could have reached his limit for sure. But uh, again, selfishly, I'd like to see more from Mr. Arrington and more strikeouts. If you're Eastern Mennonite, you might be ready for a new pitcher. Lynchburg has only used three today. Potts and Batchmore combining in the first game for the win and the save. And then all Wesley Arrington here today. Will Waller is in the game for Eastern Mennonite. Speaking of pitchers, he is the fifth arm that they have used. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. Lynchburg has 13 runs on seven hits. There's also seven hit batters in there. And Lynchburg has drawn, I believe it's five walks. I think it's six walks. I'll double check the numbers. As Sean Pokerot pokes one to third base. Play complete there across the diamond for out number one. Now third base for Gavin Collins has taken one of those walks for Lynchburg. He's got a hit on the day hit in the game. Gavin Collins had two hits in game one, a triple and a single. We were raving about Gavin Collins' consistency. But not only that, he's got quite a few multi-hit games in there as well. Will Waller is the fifth pitcher of the game. This will be appearance number nine for Will Waller. One and one record. He's over 15 innings on the season now. Gavin Collins belts one to left. Tough play there. It's down for a double off the fence. Collins will cruise in standing up, and he's got another multi-hit game. 
Another one with an extra base hit in there as well. Gavin Collins really racking those up as the year goes on. Gavin Collins on the season. Four doubles, three triples, and a homer. Pinch hitter off the bench is Eddie Gimble now. Eddie Gimble was part of that comeback win against Bridgewater. He got in there along with Ben Jones in game two of the doubleheader that was here a few weeks ago. Lynchburg won game two in walk-off fashion. Gimbel and Jones, part of the proceedings, part of the reason why Lynchburg got the win. It was a somewhat of a bold move there by Coach Lucas Jones, going off the bench to get some guys we haven't heard much from. He knows what they can do, though. That's part of the reason why those coaches really value the practice time, fall practice, spring practice. You get a read on all these guys. You, you know somewhat what they can do coming into this season as you recruited them, but you learn more and more about your team as the season goes on. 1-1 one, one count here for Eddie Gimble, who is one for two on the year, batting 500. Number is going to drop as he flares that one to the shortstop for out number two of the inning. Logan Webster in the starting lineup and still hitting here in the bottom of the seventh. Logan Webster is 0 for 2 with a walk and a hit by pitch. Flew out to left field and had that pop up to the catcher. Off speed pitch in the dirt. Gobbled up by our new catcher back there for Eastern Mennonite. Mennonite made a quite a few defensive changes. Line change, if you will. That's another sport that I mentioned that is great in the springtime because hockey is closing in on the playoffs. Same thing for the NBA guys as well. There's a breaking ball from Waller for a strike. It's 88 pitches for Wes Arrington at the moment. Back to the Lynchburg pitcher, 88 pitches. He's faced 25 hitters. Four of them have reached base. Sharp shot there from Logan Webster, but it's going to be an out, and the inning is over. Lynchburg does not score. They leave one runner on. That was Gavin Collins, who doubled but left stranded, and will move to the top of the eighth inning. New pitcher for Lynchburg, it's number 11, the senior, Travis Shoemate. Big tip of the cap to Wesley Arrington. He went seven innings, surrendered one hit, struck out 11. There were two hit batters and one walk in there for Wes Arrington in an outstanding start. His longest start of the year, innings-wise, and most strikeouts of the season as well. Exactly what the doctor ordered for Lynchburg and Wes Arrington. That's what good teams do. They have guys step up when you need it. Whether it's Christopher Newport Wednesday, people like Eric Hyatt and Sean Pokorock making great contributions when they haven't really started a lot of games or pitchers going long when you need them to, saving the bullpen. Here's Travis Shoemate. 
Pitched in 18 games last year, struck out 15. ERA was 3.60. He has pitched twice this season. He's gone through some injury issues. Pitched back on February 19th through an inning. And then it was a third of an inning against Bridgewater in that one-run walk-off win back on March 11th. So Travis Shoemate hasn't been out in basically three and a half weeks, but he's pitching here in the eighth inning against Eastern Mennonite. Becomes a game where you get such great stuff from Potts and then also Arrington, the starting pitchers. It saves the bullpen. You now might have to do the thing where you get some bullpen guys a session during the game or after the game, which is hard to do because it's, it's really hard for a pitcher to focus as Shoemate will get the strikeout looking on a off-speed pitch that came in there to send Dylan Cassell down looking. Dylan Cassell was the sub in there, number three. He strikes out looking. Dylan Hall started in this nine-hole spot, and he's back up again in the top of the eighth. But you have guys ready, of course. Everybody's ready, seemingly, unless you're injured. But everybody that's healthy will be ready to go as Pokerock takes the foul tip and wincing a bit. He'll try to walk that one off. So when you have these starters that go long, think back to Josh Jorman in, in Wednesday's game against Christopher Newport. He went longer than I think coaching staff maybe would have counted on. You're hoping he can pitch deep into the game, but you're not necessarily counting on it. So when Jorman does that, you save the bullpen there. Bullpen has been saved in this one. So you may have to get those relievers a little bit of extra work, and that's hard to do after the game. It's hard to get the full focus and the attention. But that's just part of the deal as a reliever. And back to what good teams do. Good teams can find a way to make that work. Fastball, outer half for Shoemate. All systems go right here for Shoemate. He looks good. 0-2 count. Already struck out one. We'll see if the freshman Dylan Hall can stay alive. Breaking ball. Back to Shoemate. Had to dance a little bit, but actually fielded it clean underneath his body and then wisely runs it over there to first with the soft toss for the out. Second one gone this inning. Ethan Morotsky is in to play center field for Lynchburg. Also fans, that change made to begin this eighth inning. Ethan Morotsky is a junior outfielder from Woodbridge, Virginia. And his spot would be up next. He would lead off the next inning. We may see Coach Lucas Jones put another substitute in for that spot, but we'll just have to see. Speaking of subs, we have one for Eastern Mennonite. Hitting right now, Logan Mason is out of the game. And in the game is Julian Gonzalez, one for three on the season. Number 45, Julian Gonzalez, trying to keep the inning alive and potentially build something for Eastern Mennonite. He'll swing on this one in the air. Poker Rock's going to get a chance to try the pop-up catch, and he cannot pull it in. Spinning back towards the field of play like those pop-ups do. And it's a tough one. It will go down just as a foul ball. It's another one you practice all the time. We talked pop-ups. So that's for the whole team. But those catchers get a lot of practice with those. You use your pitching machine. You turn it straight up. You fire the ball in there, and you get a great, true back-spinning pop-up. And then the coaches love to show off and hit the pop-ups as well with the fungo. I think the, the great teams get a balance. They catch some off the machine and some off the fungo bat. Comes off the fungo bat that the coaches use a little bit different than it does off of the game bat because as a coach, you're just tossing it up and hitting it where a true pop-up in the game is delivered from the pitcher. And how about another strikeout for Travis Shoemate? He gets two. Good inning of work right there. Three up, three down. Shoemate K's two. And Lynchburg will get to hit one more time in the bottom of the eighth inning.
Dylan Rock has taken the mound for Eastern Millonite. Dalton Rock, Dalton Rock, number 32. No earned runs so far in an inning and two thirds of work. That's two appearances, so this will be trip number three to the bump for Dalton Rock. Ethan Morotsky will hit for Lynchburg. He went in to play center field in the top of the eighth. He assumes Carson Atkins' spot in the batting order. So Carson Atkins, the hot streak will, will not end, but will put on pause anyway, at least till Tuesday. Hornets are at home Tuesday, hosting the Battling Bishops from North Carolina Wesleyan. Tuesday afternoon game, first pitch scheduled for 3 p.m. Then Lynchburg hits the road to Randolph-Macon oh, Wednesday. And then we're back at home next Saturday. Lynchburg will host Farrell. Spring baseball. It is just the best. It's like Christmas all over again. Every time you come to the ballpark, it's like Christmas, especially when you get great weather like we have today. Ethan Morotsky, 0 for 2 on the season. So he'll look to break that uh, over and get himself in the books with a base hit. 0 for 2 with one strikeout. He has played in six games, just the two at-bats. Just two plate appearances. He'll send one up the middle. Ground ball fielded. And unfortunately, the first hit will have to wait for Ethan Morotsky. Brandon Garcia, shortstop, still in the lineup. Looking for his second hit of the game. Garcia does have an RBI single that came in the second inning. Lynchburg scored three there. Lynchburg blanked in the first, three in the second, three in the third, four in the fourth. That was the grand slam from Carson Atkins. Actually the only hit in that four run fourth inning. The three hitters that were on board got there because of the hit by pitch. No runs for Lynchburg in the fifth, three in the sixth, none in the seventh. And we're in the bottom of the eighth right now. Garcia takes ball two. He does have two walks already in this game. Brandon Garcia leading off. He was in the two hole in game number one today. Had a couple hits in the first contest and was hit by a pitch in the first one. One of eight batters that EMU has hit today. Garcia the only one in game one. And then it's been seven in game two. Although we actually haven't seen one in a while. So the pitchers that Mennonite has gone to have been a bit more in control of the baseball, but out of control here. Garcia will take his third walk of the game. Officially, right now for Brandon Garcia, it's one for three with three walks. And that is six plate appearances. Ethan Smith will pinch hit in the bottom of the eighth for Eric Hyatt. So Eric Hyatt will finish the day two for five. And now it's Ethan Smith. He has no at-bats on the season. He's played in two. He pinch ran in a game and did score a run. But no at-bats for Ethan Smith. So let's get the first hit of the season right here. Of course, if you're Dalton Rock, you're looking to preserve the perfect ERA at the moment. Dalton Rock has not surrendered a hit this season. Not a big body of work for Dalton Rock, but so far so good. Smith will swing on this one. Ooh, fielded on the run there by the first baseman. Snags it out of the sky for out number two. So Smith's first base hit of the year will have to wait. Dylan Fisher is in the game. He'll be in Avery Neves' spot. So it ends up being a hitless day for Avery Neves, a hitless game. He did have one hit in the first game. That was in the bottom of the first inning, triple. Neves reached base in both games, so those marks will continue. Dylan Smith, Dylan Fisher is in. Number 27, 0 for 4 so far this season for Lynchburg. Dylan Fisher, left-handed hitter, has a runner on first. Now it'll be a runner on second as this ball will hit the catcher's glove and go to the backstop. Two away, one ball, no strikes. For Dylan Fisher, the left-handed hitter, the infield a little bit more open there when you do have the runner on first. You have the first baseman 
holding him on. The second baseman might be covering. Shortstop could be covering the steal too. But it looked like the second baseman was covering there in that configuration defensively. But now Dylan Fisher has a chance to drive a runner in. Better chance anyway. Fisher's a senior from Haymarket, Virginia. Left-handed swinger. 1-1 one, one the count for Fisher. Two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Lynchburg leading by 12. It's a 13-1 lead. Lynchburg with eight hits, but 13 runs. Part of that is just a, a situation where if you have more pitches to hit, if you have more hittable balls coming in the zone from EMU, Lynchburg could probably safely say they would have more base hits. But unfortunately, the Royals have hit seven, and they've walked seven as well. That one just missed from Dalton Rock, number 32 for Eastern Mennonite. Well, it's been a long day. First game started right at noon. We got here an hour or so early, so much Fun stuff going on at the ballpark. And everyone up here in the press box would agree. 3-1 count. Dylan Fisher hacking. Fouls that one off. And we'll be back at the ballpark again on Tuesday. Dalton Rock is a freshman from Richmond. More young talent for Eastern Mennonite. Keep an eye on some of these freshmen as their careers continue. Lot to like there for the Royals. Full count. Two outs. Dylan Fisher hitting for Lynchburg. Here's the delivery from Rock, and you've got hit batter number eight of the game. That ties the season high from 2022 for Lynchburg. They got hit eight times in a game against Eastern Mennonite in an Eastern Mennonite last year. Sorry. Ty Gravett came in the game defensively, but now this will be his first at bat. He's in that spot that Ben Jones occupied. Bench still very much into it, making noise over there for Lynchburg. They want to see some of these reinforcements get base hits. Number one, Ty Gravett, 0 for 2 on the season so far, swinging the bat. Another trait of those successful teams, the starters and the big boppers root for the other guys as well. And I hesitate to call them reserves for Lynchburg. I like the term reinforcements because these guys, they may not have the, the numbers and the stats, but they bring a lot to the table. They can really do some damage. And you never know, injury situation or something else when a guy who hasn't played a whole lot has to step in there and do big things. Had that happen against CNU on Wednesday. And coach Lucas Jones is that coach who he will give you a chance. If you're getting it done in practice, if you're showing the coaching staff something, he'll give you a shot. Might be in a big game, too. Ty Gravitt's got a shot swinging the bat right here. 2 1 count with two outs. Runner on second is Brandon Garcia. He walked for the third time earlier this inning. Fastball away, missed. 3 1 now for number one, Ty, Gra Ty Gravitt. Infield, regular depth, straight up. Same way for the outfield for the Royals with this 3-1 count. Runners at first and second. Gravit will shoot that one up the middle. Diving stop, and the out is made at second. Pretty impressive there to end the eighth inning and deny Gravit what would have been his first hit of the season. So Lynchburg leaves a couple on, no runs and no hits, no errors. And the Hornets look to close it down and get win number 20 on the season.
You see the numbers there for Lynchburg, 13 runs on eight hits. Eight hit batters, though. Seven walks that Lynchburg has drawn. So that's 15 extra base runners right there. And that's a stat that arguably won't look great for Lynchburg. They've left a lot on base, but they've gotten a lot on base as well. The damage has been done. Big fly from Carson Atkins, the grand salami back in the fourth inning. Pretty much closed the door on Eastern Mennonite in this one. Lynchburg did add three in the bottom of the sixth. And it was a 5-3 ball game in our first matchup today. The Royals really have a good ball club and they have a lot of talent. But that's what this Lynchburg squad can do. They can make you look bad in a hurry. You get behind the eight ball against Lynchburg and it's really hard to recover. We'll get our first look at the season this season on number 47, Sam Allhype. He's a junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. First career appearance for Sam Allhype. So con congratulations. He did play at Roanoke previously. We'll see the lefty Allhype, 6'1". Uh, Another left-handed option out of the bullpen for Lynchburg. Forrest Shuey will hit for EMU as both teams making quite a few changes and you got to scramble and grab your stat sheet and look at things. Forrest Shuey is a 2-11 hitter on the season. He has started six. It'll be a left on left matchup as all hype delivers. Strike one swinging there. Forrest Shuey, another guy from Stanton, Virginia, Riverheads High School, senior. He'll bounce this one to first base. Josh Jorman is in there for Lynchburg. And we know he's pretty comfortable making that play. Flips it to all height coming across there on the PFP. And it's out number one. Hunter Sturgeon, another sub off the bench for EMU. Number 24 is a sophomore from Gloucester. And he's a left-handed swinger, so it's another left-on-left -left matchup for Sam Allhype. Sturgeon's appeared in two games as a pitcher this season. And hitting-wise, let's get some hitting numbers here. Again, you have to scramble around and look at the stat sheet, which is always disorganized when I'm doing a game. One for one on the year, batting 1,000. Breaking ball misses outside for Sam Allhype. Few other pitchers up in the Lynchburg bullpen. Again, that might just be some guys getting some work because they didn't go in the game. But possibility to give somebody a batter or two here if you're the Lynchburg coaching staff. 3-0 count. All height is set and ready to deal. That one bounces into the catcher. And it will be a walk. One on, one out. Top nine, 13 uh, 1. Lynchburg trying to close down Four victory number 20 on the season. They've won six in a row. This would be win number seven consecutive for a team that shows no signs of slowing down. Lynchburg has gotten better and better as the year has gone on. And there's some really, really good teams that Lynchburg has beat in that swing as well. Good Hampton Sydney ball club on Tuesday. Lynchburg took down CNU Wednesday. And go back to the, the doubleheader sweep on the road in Lexington against Washington and Lee. Hornets right now are eight and one in the ODAC. They're tied for the conference lead going into the day. See how that all shakes out. Update you on that one Tuesday. And we'll probably have a few more viewers on Tuesday, those midweek games, a little tougher for some of the fans to get to. One, two, the count with one away. All hype holds, pitches, and it's another strikeout. Strikeout number one for Sam All Height. It's out number two. Another sub in the game for Eastern Mennonite. Now batting number 40. Hattie Bruno. Bruno. Hattie Bruno. 
Bruno wears number 40 for Eastern Mennonite, and he'll look to continue the game for the Royals. Lefty's coming in off the bench. I, I don't know that Lynchburg planned to give Sam all height, all this left-on-left -left action, but it's worked out, I suppose. A one count on Bruno. Garcia, the shortstop, shaded up the middle. You can see him in the shot there. That's always fun when you get the center field camera and you get four players in the picture and five participants when you count the home plate umpire. 0-2 oh, the count now. All height, deals, fouled off by Bruno. 13-1, the Lynchburg lead. How about the start from Wes Arrington? It was a no-hitter going for a while. Still, only one hit on the board in the game for Mennonite. All height, looking to preserve that. Bruno fouls another one off. Just outstanding pitching the entire day. Zach Potts, he gets another win. That is victory number seven in seven starts this season for Zach Potts. And Jack Batchmore got his fifth save of the year. And the pitching in game two has not dropped off at all. Ground ball up the middle, and there it is going to be hit number two. So Bruno keeps it going. And Bruno now is two for four on the season, so he ups his average to 500. Looks like Sam Allheight will be out of the game. We'll get to see a new pitcher from Lynchburg. Second hit of the ball game for Eastern Mennonite. We'll extend the game. And we'll pause to figure out the pitching changes for Lynchburg. Here comes number 35, Nathaniel Mack, into the game for Lynchburg, Jr. from Yorktown, Virginia. It'll be the first appearance of the season. Mack did pitch in three games as a sophomore. Struck out two hitters in his first career appearance. And this is inning number one, or what would potentially be a third of an inning, hopefully, for Nathaniel Mack. 6'4", Jr. He's got the pitcher's frame, that's for sure. And you get a look at the delivery there as he comes at you with the long arms and long legs. Nathaniel Mack. There are two outs in the top of the ninth. It's a 13-1 ball game. Lynchburg leads. Sam Allheight got the first two outs for Lynchburg, surrendered a base hit. And now it's Nathaniel Mack's turn to get the ball. Facing. Number 36, Logan Jones for Southern Eastern Mennonite. So we've seen a lot of new faces for both teams. And now it's Logan Jones in to hit for Eastern Mennonite to try to continue the game and add to their hit total. Logan Jones from Barbersville, Virginia, William Monroe High School for the 6'3 senior. Logan Jones. Enters the game hitting 125. This will be game number 10 that Logan Jones has played in. Got a good look at the breaking ball there from Nathaniel Mack. Good action on that. 2-0 count, though. Two runners on for Eastern Mennonite. Mack looks in. Checks this runner at second. And now deals. Fastball up for ball number three. 3-0 three the count. Two outs. 
as Nathaniel Mack will look to pitch himself back into this at bat here, falling behind 3-0 to start it. He will get a strike swinging on a fastball up and in. 3-1 now. Defense ready to work for Mr. Mack. You always like to be the guy that makes the final out. It's nice to carry that baseball into the dugout. Mm, up and in for Mack, and that is a walk. Base is loaded now with two outs. Another substitute in the game is number 51 this time for uh, Eastern yes, Mennonite. This is Garrett Nice, a sophomore from Pennsylvania. One of the few guys on Eastern Mennonite's roster not from Virginia. Just looking at that roster, I was just blown away by how many different locations and high schools represented for EMU. But Garrett Nice from Doc Mennonite Academy in Pennsylvania, a 6'4 sophomore who has played in three games. Played in one game last year. Mack has fallen behind again, ball one. We've got two down here in the top of the ninth inning. Lynchburg looking to secure win number 20 on the season. Back-to-back 36-win -back campaigns for Lynchburg. Had the winning record when the season got cut short in 2021 because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But you could already say if you get to 20 wins again, pretty impressive. A great start to this year. We're, al we're already halfway through, but it just feels like the sky's the limit for this Lynchburg team. Mack gets that pitch across. One, two, the count. Talked about wanting to be the fielder that made the last out. How about a strikeout? See if Nathaniel Mack can do it here. One, two, count. Two down. Breaking ball in there for strike three, and the game is done. Lynchburg, 20 wins on the season. They beat Eastern Mennonite 13 to one. We saw the grand slam from Carson Atkins. Wes Arrington took a no-hitter halfway through the game. Pitching staff outstanding, and the Hornets win it. They move to 20 and three. Eastern Mennonite falls to five and 20 on the year. Lynchburg now nine and one in ODAC play. It's seven in a row for Lynchburg, and they're still undefeated at home. All the streaks still alive for the Hornets. 12 and 0 at Fox Field. They'll put that undefeated record at home on the line again this Tuesday. Hope you can join us at the ballpark as Lynchburg will host North Carolina Wesleyan this Tuesday. Game time, 3 p.m., and you can always see the game live on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network.